It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy Anakos here. Micah Sargent's filling in for Jason Snell. Uh, joining us for Alex Lindsay from Apple Insider, Stephen Robles. Stephen and I both have the new Apple Watch Ultra. We'll get uh, our capsule reviews on the air. Plus a look at the new AirPods 2, the new AirPod Pro 2. And what to expect next month. Will there be an Apple event? Maybe not. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 837, recorded Tuesday, September 27th, 2022. He left in a hurry, Kane. This episode of Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by the new and recently updated TriCaster 2 Elite by NewTek, the most complete live production system in the planet. There's a TriCaster for every production, including yours, including ours. Visit go.newtech.com slash twit dash TV, where an interactive guide will advise you on which TriCaster is right for you. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple. And uh, since both Jason Snell and Alex Lindsay have decided to recuse themselves, it's just me and Andy Anako today from <laughs> WG Big H in Boston. Hello, Andrew. Hello. Let's see. The thing is, like, if it were just Alex, I'd wonder, okay, some head of state Something's has just going died. On. And, yeah. And we need and they need a live stream. <laughs> if it were just Jason, I just you know, I think, okay, well, he had like an overlap. He has kids, he's sending a, a kid off to college. Both of them makes me think that what is Apple releasing tomorrow that I don't know about exactly. that everybody needs to be briefed about or live streamed exactly. from. Exactly. And now I'm going to stop everybody from tuning out because it's just me and Andy, because it isn't just me and Andy. Hey, yay! <laughs> Uh, welcome, Micah Sargent. Always great to have you, Micah, filling in at the last minute from iOS Today and Tech News Weekly and the Tech Guy and, uh, and of course, uh, an Apple expert. Your timing is excellent. Did you get your watch? <laughs> Did you get your watch today, yesterday? Uh, well, I've got my Series uh, 8, yeah. Oh, no, you were waiting for your AirPods. I was waiting for my AirPods. Pro. I like them so much, here. I put them on a lanyard. Not, look at you. You're around carrying around your neck. neck like it's a precious heirloom or something. Yeah, yeah it is a wow. precious, precious heirloom. We'll talk about that in a bit. Also from Apple Insider, great to have back to our microphones. Stephen, this time I'm going to say his name right, right? Robles. Hello, Stephen. All right, thank you. It's great to be here once again. Thanks Welcoming for the me. beard back to the yeah. show, Beard <laughs> FM. <laughs> uh, that's his website. So, uh, yeah, um, everybody got their ultras. The reviews have been out for a while. Steven, have you had one for a while? I do. I got one uh, on launch day. There's the ultra with the uh, white ocean band right there. Nice. Oh, you have the ocean Sharp. band. I have the gray ocean band. And at some point I'll bring in the, did it take you a while to figure out how the ocean band? Been worked. It, it, I read the instructions. I copiously read, I, you know, about the second loop and putting it through. Yeah, I think I threw the instructions out or something. Because <laughs> so it comes with a uh, removable. In fact, it's not even attached when you get it. Second loop for the right. tab end, and the, I didn't pay attention, and I just put it around the back, and which means I couldn't get the tab in at all. <laughs> Like it, w it wouldn't fit. And I thought, well, that's this is. I don't. I, eh. Then I figured it out. I, I, I look, oh, there's holes there. I could just thread it through a hole. And now I quite like yes. it. And it's adjustable. So that's because this is the one size fits all band. Even your wet. I do like it. I have been using a lot of my previous solo loops yeah. with the Ultra because they work. all fit and they yeah. fit great. Yeah. yeah. In Very fact, I was concerned about my pad and quill. Uh, Micah, what do you young people call those? Um, a cuff. cuff. The cuff. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I was concerned about that because it had a hole cut out for the uh, back of the watch, and it actually works. So everything's fine. Oh, good. So that's good. We're here to report that your Ultra, as huge as it might be, and I put this on Lisa's, my wife's wrist, and it really is too big for her. I said, come on, you would love this watch. So uh, what do you think, Mr. Robleth? I really like it. I mean, the battery life, I've been testing it, went 48 hours straight yeah. off charger, and it was still at 28% battery, which is pretty amazing. And even uh, did some deep sea diving in my pool and tested <laughs> the, uh, the depth app. Oh, if only I had a way. pool. <laughs> <laughs> it did go down to five feet. And so yeah, as soon as the Apple Watch Ultra is submerged, depth app comes up, went down to five feet, and it saw it, read the water temperature, depth, and it was pretty accurate. So I turn, cool. you know, when you're setting it up, it says, well, 
if you go in water, do you want to know how deep you are and how cold it is? And I said, well, of course I do. Because if I fall off the Titanic, it would be nice as I sink to know how, how far I've sunk. Uh, but I maybe I'll scuba sometime. I have scuba in the past. I like scuba diving. This is really, though, yeah. silly for a person like me to have. Cause it's oh, like, I mean, it's the same for me. I have no practical use for it. The most yeah. action I've had is grocery shopping with Apple Watch Ultra. <laughs> Uh, but that larger display showing my grocery list, that was that was key feature right there. It's a great experience. Uh, I Yeah, 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 that's a good point. It's great for grocery shopping. I'm sure Apple will put that in their next ad. <laughs> yeah. I was shopping in the aisle at Safeway when all of a sudden I couldn't remember. Iceberg or Romaine? Then my watch <laughs> came to the rescue. I, am, I, 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 am, I, reached, I reached in to buy a bundle of romaine, and then that's when the automatic spritzers came on, and <laughs> thank God I had the rugged version of my Apple Watch, yeah. or else, well, things could have gotten pretty south pretty fast, let me tell you that. You know, in this shot, it, the close, it does look kind of hunky, chunky. Um, See, that's that's why that's why I'm looking forward to like designers coming forward with like more substantial bands like 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 the 70s to have like those like gauntlet sort of things that like that made you look like real beefy and real hunky like uh, it's, I was the day that it, the day that it was shown off I thought that oh my god there's going to be such a market on Etsy for like women's watch women's Apple Watch Ultra bands that make you look like uh, either Wonder Woman or Xena. Because oh, cool. like if you if you if, if you're going if you're going for one of the, if you're going for one of those like ultra marathon like mucker sort of things you're gonna want to have like the 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 Wonder Woman bracer or the Xena. Oh, this like, would be good, yeah, like, for just, a mudder, yeah. How deep and how cold is the mud? Yeah, I will say uh, Although, I watched a okay a DC Rainmaker actually has a YouTube channel. I just found it this morning, and he tested the depth in one of those like cylindrical yeah, yeah. water it's cases, yeah, yeah, and. Yeah, he brought it down all the way to 130 feet, and that's when it stops measuring depth. That's like the maximum, at least in feet, 130 feet. <laughs> well, and uh, yeah. but it, it stayed accurate with the gauge. I thought, uh, it's see, supposed I thought to, it did something it, really. It's supposed uh, to be able to go like, to a thousand. Sorry. I mean, 100 meters, but that doesn't mean right. to continue to measure. Yeah, it does. It does. It does this cool thing that's very safe. That says like it could probably measure beyond that, but the screen just simply says, "Okay, you're below 140 now. I'm out." I'm not a, I'm not you're, a, you're, 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 that seems like a lot. You'd have this. to be a specialized yeah. diver, right? To go deeper than that or no. Yeah. I think that, I think that's when you need mix. Yeah. Like you, yeah. Uh, but this I, is I was, cool. So this is a hype, this is a hyperbaric chamber for watches or something. He's got a, it's got a pump on it and it can, it can increase the water pressure, huh? Yeah. That's kind of it's, cool. It's, 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 it's good video. He he said that he he said that he had it commissioned. He had it made so he had it made so long ago that like the tablet that he's he's using with is using like a eight, yeah. Look at the bezel on generation that outdated. <laughs> but he but he said that he, he he was hoping that he could he would like uh, be able to like uh, depth test like all these waterproof and like water resistant watches to failure. And then he found out that even when he bought like these really really crappy watches like off of AliExpress, like they don't just like catastrophically fail in a cool way. They just usually just kind of keep working until they stop yeah so well, apple says is water resistant um and yet they show people swimming in it and they say you can dive is it really can you is it waterproof why don't they say waterproof i water, think that's a my, different my, kind of certification for proofing, it is yeah but, the ip i mean deep sea diving to 100 meters i mean that's pretty resistant i would say unless you can only do it for 10 seconds and then you have to come back yeah. i mean i don't know <laughs> uh, my, my, my understanding, the last time I looked into it, about yeah, like a year or two ago, is that the the difference is usually that if it's waterproof, that means that it has active measure, active countermeasures against ingress, uh. meaning that you have gaskets that are being held together by positive mechanical seals. Whereas water resistant means that there's glue. There's it's at some point this glue this system could fail. At which point it doesn't. At which point this ages out of the uh, water resistant system. IP but, stands I think, for ingress protection. And uh, I don't, what is the IP rating uh, on this? Is it IP68? 68. 68? Okay, so IP6X yeah. can resist high pressure heavy sprays of water. <laughs> uh, it's not about a water. So uh, is this a way that Apple can get out of uh, warrantying it if it fails underwater? 
It seems well, they've odd. Already, they they get out of warranting it by simply expressing that it's not it's not warranty it's not, against this. So, it's not that, so they're good. Yeah, it, ha- it has a bunch of military spec certifications, which are absolutely intense. If you look at the entire library of certifications that come under this category that they're that they're qualifying under, a lot of it really is. Does it does it resist against chemical attack? Does it resist against acid? Does it resist against again fighting the <laughs> fighting aliens on the on the USS Sulaco or something like that? Uh, but however, I was excited when I saw that certification that. I learned about the certification where it's passed against certain elements of that, but not the really, really exciting ones. So if you are, if you are on a, if your procurement re- requirements, meaning we, meaning your boss will, uh, your, your company will, will, uh, will authorize the, the procurement of this device. So long as it has this kind of certification, it will pass so, some kinds of these super, super intense field certifications, but not others. But it, it does indicate, it does point out that a uh, People like me are thinking, oh, well, if I'm uh, either I'm an adventurer or I'm just want a really cool, big, fancy watch. But there are a lot of people who like work in the oil, work in the energy industries, like we're working on oil derricks, people who are working in construction that they really do need something that they can they can use all day just as a regular like uh, regular fitness watch or just as a regular smart watch. They just need it to be super, super durable, even though they're not, you know. Uh, they're they're not skydiving off of Everest or something like that. They just they they they're operating heavy equipment. They need something that's gonna that's gonna hold up to that. Apple says, uh, rather Wikipedia says, Mill Standard 810, which is the Apple standard. They're saying we have Mill Spec 810H3 is a flexible standard that allows users to tailor <laughs> test methods to fit the application. As a result, a vendor's claim of compliance to U.S. Mill Standard 810 can be misleading because no commercial organization or agency certifies compliance. So, okay, fine. It's kind of meaningless. <laughs> uh, it's, I don't, you know, it's, uh, it's, you could take it out into battle, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, but the but the point is made. In fact, didn't somebody try to hammer it and uh, ended up hammering, yeah. destroying the table? Some YouTuber. Yeah, that's a typical. Supposedly, YouTuber, the whatever. Apple Watch stopped working before the screen was actually shattered, and uh, so the shock to the internals messed it up before the screen would break. But I mean, enough hits, the screen shattered too. So yeah, I'm yeah. not going to hit it with a hammer. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I might I might take it swimming. <laughs> I might, I might do I'm that. I'm more concerned about my wrist if it gets hit with a hammer than anything else. Yeah, it's... that's a good point. Um, but I have to say, I love it. I, I, I'm not curious, Stephen, what you think. Uh, unless, Andy, did you get one too? No, I think it's just me and Stephen at this point. Yeah. Nope, just you guys. Um, I like the bigger screen because uh, I can actually type the passcode in <laughs> the first time every time. <laughs> uh, I, I Are you using the Wayfarer, uh, the new Wayfarer uh, watch face? I typically used a modular watch face, and that's one of the weird things with the display. Because it's larger, it's scaled up all yeah. the watch faces, and it feels a little sparse. Like, it's not yeah. feeling like the normal modular would feel. So that's, that's a little why, weird. And That's why yeah. I'm using Wayfair, because I have eight complications, which I like. I love I have love my... <laughs> yeah. And if I double tap the bezel, I can, uh, I can see what longitude and latitude mm-hmm. I'm at, uh, which is not all that useful, but... And it has a, <laughs> and it has a compass yeah. on it. It also does some really right. interesting things. Uh, you can set waypoints. So, if like breadcrumbs, if you're Hansel right. and Gretel, it'll you can drop <laughs> waypoints as you're as you're hiking. Which means if you're going off trail, at least you'll be able to maybe get back. Uh, one of the waypoints can be where your car is parked. So for me, that's more useful. Yeah. <laughs> Im- importantly, of note, that research. is a that is a watch OS uh, feature, and so and yours do it with, too. Um, yeah, any oh, modern nice. Apple Watch is able to do the wayfinding thing. Oh. Well, never mind yep. then, iOS Today host. <laughs> I just, I just you think can't do that, longitude and latitude, can you? I cannot. But okay. that's just easily one of the coolest features, in my opinion, the wayfinding thing. I do like to it hike. Is. And so cool. I was excited to see yeah. that it was available yeah. on multiple watches. Uh, I, I uh, just say, uh, as I'm, you say, Stephen, my battery life. So yeah. they want you to sleep with it on five nights in a row so that you can project your ovulation, which I'm excited about. So uh, <laughs> I have been sleeping with it on. <laughs> Only hit Lisa once last night, which was, which was good. <laughs> Because this can leave quite a mark, and uh, yeah. and battery life overnight is like six percent loss. Actually, it was like more even like four percent loss. It was very low. Uh, I wore it overnight nice. last night, all day yesterday with a workout. It was down to fifty three percent after a full twenty four hours. So that bodes well for forty eight hour battery life. Charged it up in less than an hour while I was having breakfast. Uh, this yeah. is a watch you can, if you might not want to, but it is certainly one you can wear all the time. 
And then that's what I did. I, I sleep with mine. I slept with my Series 7 and earlier watches anyway for sleep tracking. And with like the two day battery life, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Just wear it overnight. And the charger, it did charge up very quickly, quicker than I would have thought being a larger battery. But if you have that faster charging capability like the Series 7 did, and you have a charger that supports it, it charged up very quickly. I was surprised. I was a little disappointed for 700 or 800 bucks. It should come with a better puck. It comes with the same puck that the other. Lesser. You get a braided cable, though. Oh, it's braided, true. It is braided. Wow. Apple Watch cable, yeah. <laughs> so the old edition old... watches would come with that fancy, you know, uh, ultra suede <laughs> table stand. I still have my original with I that. I love Because I got a stainless steel original yeah. Apple Watch. I still have the box. Yeah, that's I will good say one. I'll be testing uh, this Apple Watch Ultra in the hurricane uh, that's actually headed my way. Oh, where are you right now? <laughs> oh, my word. I am near uh, Tampa, Florida. Oh, Tampa's uh, going to be the first time in 100 years Tampa's yeah. had a yes. hurricane. I jokingly hurricane. tweeted, uh, I tweeted last week when I got it jokingly, oh, I get to test it in a hurricane, and now I'm uh, regretting that tweet because <laughs> oh, I think it will be a little <laughs> legitimate did it. test. Yes, and uh, I, unfortunately, I, I do have to say I'm about to lose power. I did not plan for this. That's okay. Uh, if you uh, lose power, uh, we'll wish you well, and we'll think about you as you. Ian. So it's making it's made landfall. Is it, is it stormy out? Well, I'm about to lose power because there's a generator being hooked up currently, and uh I was told it wouldn't need to have the power off, but it's going to. And so when that kicks off, I'm not sure how long I'll be out. But oh, uh, I'll see. be reporting live from the hurricane floor uh, <laughs> tomorrow. And that will let you know how Apple Watch Ultra does in that kind of environment. <laughs> wow, this is exciting. <laughs> Steven, can, 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 I, can I make one request just for, I mean, this this would be a generous gift for us. But if you if the, if the crew says, oh, by the way, we're going to be shutting off power in about 30 seconds, could you just say, oh, my God, the winds are starting to pick up now. I don't know how... So that you yeah. get cut off in mid sentence because that oh, would make that a would really great good. thumbnail for the video. That would be, I mean, it'd be <laughs> yeah. great for the okay, channel. I'll, I'll, I know it's not your channel, but I mean, I'll just let in them the back of your mind, to just, cut it off now, and I'll, it, I'll try to know. time it right. <laughs> if wow. you can, like, and just reach, just just like give the camera a little bit of shake and like say, so "Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah." I got to hit, I got to head for the shelter. Wow. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be making fun. I hope everything works out okay. That was rude of me. Thank you. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. Uh, yeah, so if you, if the power goes out, we'll understand it when you yep. disappear. Appreciate it. Sorry about that. No, that's quite all right. Do you have family in Puerto Rico as well? <laughs> Not anymore. Every, we all oh, okay. moved to New you York. Got out. And okay. then, um, yeah, so so no one uh, no one's there now. Yeah, because so, uh, it got hit very hard. And uh, yeah, our thoughts and prayers, as they say, out to our friends in Puerto Rico. Um, yeah, I was going to try and fly my DJI Mini 2 drone, uh, but I don't think it's going to withstand those hurricane force winds. Uh, I think that's going to work. <laughs> Will not it, work. Yeah, mine doesn't even like a light breeze, to be honest with you. <laughs> no, no. no, you can't take it to the beach. No. It's just, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Here's a teardown of the Ultra, uh, where in which you could see the giant, uh, the very giant uh, battery in it. This is the iFixit uh, folks who do such a great job uh, with yeah. their teardowns. Um, it, it one thing I did learn though, though, does, it, as tempting as it might be, because there's penelope screws in the back, very visible. Uh, do not take your uh, watch apart. Apparently, it's not easy to put back together again <laughs> unless you're a trained professional. Do not. Uh, anyway, the the kind of the bottom line review, Stephen, on the uh, Ultra, worth it. Well, you know, I, I do like the bigger screen, and I was always a titanium watch guy. I liked the 6 and 7 in titanium. I thought it showed less scratches, plus I like the sapphire display, and you don't get that option on the Series 8 anymore. So if you want titanium, well, <laughs> there it goes. Oh, bye-bye, Stephen. Bye. It's been a pleasure to talking show. to you. Good luck in the hurricane. Holy camoly. That's scary. That's, <laughs> That's scary. terrifying. I heard, his, yeah, I heard his UPS. Yeah, beep, beep. There goes the power. Yeah. Uh, okay, we're <laughs> watch. Show this. Show the wide shot. The hurricane. Because what happens now is Brooke comes in and removes you from the presence. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, he's still there. <laughs> Wait a minute, he's back. Put him back. He's in the dark. I'll last. I'll last as, uh, as long as my APC runs on uh, my Mac Studio. I hear the beeping. I hear the beeping. <laughs> wow, wow, it's I'm amazing. Ian, it's a Central miracle. Florida. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> We're going to call him uh, Lazarus Robles, Robles from now on. That's awesome. I, I have the same UPS when I heard that beep. I'm like, hey, oh, I God, know that what, beep. What's yeah. happening in my office? I yeah. know that beep. <laughs> so if you're hearing yeah. it, folks, it's not you. It's him. Uh, That's it. But anyway, uh, yeah, final Apple Watch Ultra review. I really like it. You know, whether it's worth it, if you're not an adventurer, it's hard to say. 
liking the material, liking the bigger screen for accessibility. If you like making super large text, sorry about the beeping. Uh, that might be a worthwhile feature. But uh, I don't know. It remains to be seen. I'm going to use it for the next few weeks without my Series 7, just strictly Ultra, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, turn on the flashlight on the watch, and then that way you can just use it <laughs> oh, that's a great, to, to light your, that's a great light your idea. beard. The beard will Some stay lit. Some real ambiance, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that bright. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit. It's a little you have bit. to keep it, twisting it to your wrist to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty picky. That's tough. <laughs> Uh, we brought go. a bunch for the oh, right yeah, yeah. uh, Lit watch by his here. Apple Watch in the midst of Hurricane Ian, <laughs> direct from Tampa, it's Beard.fm. Wow. Steven, so Steven's going to be in like in, camera as well. <laughs> I Steven's going to be in like the, for, for, for the next Apple keynote where the you know, but thank God that I had my Apple Watch was able to light me <laughs> during my live stream. If I just don't want to think about what would have happened if I had not had my Apple Watch. That's hysterical. If I do my Apple Watch and my iPhone, I can kind you're of... Really, you're really, you're well lit now. Stuff. You're well, you're you probably know, the I brightest thing in that. Tampa. You need, you need an iPad yeah, for hair lighting. Out. That's great. So we should point out, <laughs> yeah, we should point yeah. out, uh, it, it's not even raining in Tampa yet. This is because they are no. converting your power to a generator uh, at this time so that you'll be ready when the hurricane hits, but you are actually not yet in a storm. <laughs> That's right, and I think uh, the APC will probably last for ten whole minutes. So that's good. Sorry again for the the short short uh, visit, but thank you again for I, having me. This to me, this is the Apple Watch uh, I've always wanted. I mean, I, I, you know, I was very skeptical with the first Apple Watch. I thought, eh, it, you know, it's just an accessory to your phone. It's not. It doesn't. And then Apple slowly added features that made it more uh, enticing for me, like the activity tracking, and uh, and by now this thing is a phone. I mean, it really is a phone. I can go out with it, listen to music. I can make phone calls. I can, I mean, I could do all that before, I guess, but with that big screen, I just feel like it's, it's got some real utility. Um, and I can always find out what longitude and latitude I'm at. I like <laughs> The compass is great, you know, you can see. Have you set up the action button for anything yet, Leo? Uh, yeah, I use it for a stopwatch. Uh, it's limited nice. what you can set it for, right, uh, Steve? Uh, yeah, I will say, oh, oh go uh, ahead. Rosemary Ray, Orchard you can this do morning. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, talk about um, it. She set up a really cool thing where she created a shortcut, because, of course, you can trigger a shortcut. She did one where it is contextually aware. So the shortcut, oh. when you hit that button, it says, if I'm in my focus mode, in this specific focus mode, do this. Otherwise, do this or do this or do that. And so instead of the button just being like, turn on something or turn off something or activate something, because it can be contextually aware, she's got a whole bunch of different things that can run. And so I was thinking, oh, it'd be so nice. I've got an action button, say, and I press that button and it knows that I'm at my, uh, in my office. And so it turns on my lights. It turns on do not disturb. It goes ahead and runs everything for me. But if I'm uh, driving and I hit the button, then that could be used to do something else. So yeah, you can get really powerful with that action button whenever you use contextual shortcuts. It also has a shortcuts complication now. So I think start, it's time to start writing shortcuts for the Apple Watch. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll have to think of what I could do with it. That's really interesting. Yeah, I've, I haven't tried a shortcut yet, but I did program it for a swimming workout, which is helpful because once you're in the water, it is difficult to use the touchscreen, and it will actually oh. lock often uh, where you can't interact with it. So being able to hit that button and start a swimming workout without touching the screen is really beneficial. Um, I will say, I think this changed with watchOS 9, to eject the water now from an Apple Watch, you used to be able to just roll the digital crown, it would kind of you know, do the sound and yeah. that's it. And now you actually have to hold the digital crown and it feels like a slower process. So I'm not crazy about that. That was actually a watchOS 9 change, not so much a hardware ultra, you know, from Series 7 Ultra. But uh, an action button for swimming, two thumbs up, definitely like that. So uh, workout, stopwatch, waypoint, backtrack, uh, dive, flashlight, or shortcut. Uh, Ooh, I like shortcut. I mean, rather, I like flashlight at a moment's notice because yeah. I do use that on my Apple Watch quite a bit. The red one in particular, because at night, uh, red light doesn't travel as far. And the, the waves uh, by oh, that's another waves, nice feature, by far. the way, of the. I think it's only of the uh, uh, where. What is it? Oh the yeah, Wayfair? you've got that special. I can make it red at night, mm -hmm. which is good if I'm wearing it at night, and it doesn't bother your eyes. It's astronomy mode too, right? That's the the color you're supposed to use if you're doing an astronomy at night doesn't somehow bother your eyes. So yeah, I like that feature a lot. I have to, I'm very happy. Now I played the siren on uh, on, uh, <laughs> oh. on Sunday. So let me play it for you now because it's a, it's a little weird. So press and hold the action button to activate siren. 
Okay, and then I'm going to press that. By the way, that's another nice feature. You can press and hold it. Medical ID, compass backtrack, emergency call, and siren all pop up. Let me turn on the siren. Folks, this is just a test. This is only a test. It's not that loud. It's really more uh, for finding you. Like you're, you're falling under a bush, and they can use echolocation to find you, I guess. Yeah, they made it clear that the the way that it's created, the frequencies are good for traveling across uh, distances. So however they've designed it, it can do a better job of being heard at a distance. Yeah. It's not it's it it's not that loud. It's not piercingly loud, which is probably a good thing. Uh, but still maybe we should we should have warned people listening on headphones. I'm okay. To take off. I'm to okay. Well, no, to take off oh. their headphones before you. Yeah, Burke came running in. Well, he didn't really come running in. He kind of lounged in. Are you okay? You all right? <laughs> is that, uh, yeah, is everything fine. all right? Everything all okay. Right, we're good. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> yes, thank you, uh, Andy. I should have said that beforehand, shouldn't I? Was it that loud, though? I'm wearing headphones. It didn't hurt well, my Well, it wasn't ears. too bad for me, but yeah, people but do have I, those yeah. boosters that they turn on, on their, in their podcasts, so <laughs> there's a chance. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I hope I haven't deafened our audience. Uh, so you can tie the shortcut to your focus modes... But what you need is like a uh, hurricane focus mode so you can set it to flashlight. You need a, you need a, some how uh, get super contextual with it. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get getting super contextual. Only when a hurricane man. is directly overhead. Right. Can it read that focus <laughs> right. mode? I yeah. feel like this I mean, is a super watch. I mean, I'm really kind of kind of excited. I mean, it, I feel like I, I there's like stuff in here that I don't know, like that shortcut thing. That's cool. I think that what what I learned this morning is that if you are, if if you were excited enough about this watch, it doesn't matter how it looks because Rosemary she she's was tiny. wearing one this morning. She's and she, tiny. It looked okay her wrists on her. are tiny, yeah. and it looked okay on her yeah. wrist. She's like, it is big, obviously bigger than, but she didn't care because now she has that action button. Now she has these extra features. She's going to be able it's to make it. use of those. Yeah, and so it's worth it. Yeah. Um, to give you an idea of the size, Lisa came up with this. It's like strapping an Apple iPod Nano to your wrist. I used to do that. Some people yeah. did. And it's about that, roughly that size, right? Yeah, but I also, I just like the look of it, you know, just for when I see my Series 7 now or the Series 6, it looks not not plain, but I mean, it's kind I of know. Know, very smooth edges, a very particular design. Yeah. I actually like this kind of hardware and it feels substantial. And so even if I'm not, you know, ice climbing or whatever, it's, I like it. I like looking down at it. I uh, I put my Series Six uh, to rest this morning in its oh. little uh, rubber Macintosh holder. <laughs> <laughs> I went to settings. I said reset, forget everything you ever knew, and just <laughs> slid it into. The soon, room. soon you will be at peace. <laughs> I was just beginning to feel. Ah, <laughs> oh, Daisy, Daisy. You're not going to live the two watch lifestyle, like sleeping with one watch and then wearing another one during the day. He actually wears one around <laughs> his ankle. <laughs> No, I, I would it, but this goes so long. I don't have to. It's kind yeah. of a kind of cool, and you, yeah, you're true. right. It feels like when you the I shouldn't say this out loud, but when you have the old watch, it's like, what is this? A Model T? This feels so. <laughs> <laughs> it feels dainty in dainty. comparison. Yeah, yeah. What is the name of that rubber uh, I, uh, iMac? I, uh, I, or Mac? Oh, for, is that Elago? Elago. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, you got a good. You young people have such good memories. It's my uh, what's that called? Ginkgo biloba. <laughs> Are you taking that? Is no. it made out of uh, Is it made out of octopus shells? Uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, worm casing. Do yeah. octopus have shells? Wait no. <laughs> <laughs> Here. It, so this is it. This is actually I really cool. I, we do recommend this. It's a really cool. The idea is like it's an old class Mac classic, but it's got a watch charger in it. You have to yeah. provide it, and then you slide your watch into it. So I took the band off. I reset it. And I slid it into its little rubber Mac. The reason I did is this watch is too huge. You could stuff it in there, but it really bulges. <laughs> it does. It will charge, but it really bulges. So maybe El, El, El Lago has to make a new bigger one for the Ultra. They need, they, they need to either make like a Mac 2 uh, version Two of Two FX it. for sure, yeah. Well, yeah. Or or they sh or they should do like when they re when they uh, when Apple like rehab refab the Apple Lisa into the Lisa Mac XL they should make a rubber version of the Lisa Mac XL. Oh, Elago, I hope you're listening. I would you buy, got those ideas for free. Love your stuff. Yeah, give me, give, give, give me a free one and you can have that idea. Is this I'll new? That one, it, it works with all the chargers. Like I, I had the 
I have the uh, uh, extra capacity battery uh, MagSafe thing, and I put it on that. It goes, and it's great. That's a good. That's actually how I charge it. Or I have the Nomad uh, stand-up uh, charger, and I it goes right on that. And uh, I like it. That. Even works with the MagSafe Duo, which that was some concern because the okay. puck to charge is so close to the surface. But it works on MagSafe Duo. Good. Charges just fine. Good. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's our uh, Apple Watch Ultra segment. <laughs> now let's talk about these because you got yours uh micah and i got mine this is the new airpod pro 2 second generation and you can tell because yeah. we have lanyards hanging off we, of exactly yeah Lan oh you did the custom uh, oh look yeah there, i wanted you? mine sooner oh, steven has one too same nice and the, the engraving shows up on the iphone screen when you pair it which is really nice oh that's what what? How oh, did, Leo, that's what magic. have we done? I thought I wanted to get it faster. I didn't want so a monogram. Did I. <gasps> that's actually that's actually a more not just a cute feature. That's important because it's it's a testimony to how badly it's like smart pairing works that you just get all of these notifications. Hey, these AirPods are within range. <laughs> Do you want to pair with them? Now you know exactly which, which pair one? you're trying to pair with. Yeah. I'm not trying to pair with. Yeah. yeah. So I, uh, you know, I. I I have always thought the AirPods uh, and the Pros were overpriced, underperforming. Um, look at that. The studio display is refusing to focus on the, uh, the phone <laughs> it's screen. Like, no, 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 no. We want your else. face, Stephen. We want your face. It shows so the engraving. So it's showing the engraving. That's really the card. cool. Yeah. yeah. That is cool. Wow. That's pretty nice. Yeah. If you get it engraved in person, like... Uh, Someone got it at the Fifth Avenue Apple, Apple Store where you can get engravings in person. If you do what? that, it won't show the engraving right. in the card. Right. Only if you order online it and has get engraved. It to program the magnet. They have an whatever. engraver there at the Fifth it, Avenue Apple okay, Store. Okay, it's a little stretch to call it engraving. They're not actually... Yeah, sort of it's laser just like etching or whatever. It's like inkjet printing. <laughs> laser think. etch. Is it yeah. etched, really? Does there texture on it? Or no, is no, it's not etched. It's, it's like printed. a print. You know, it's there's, an, it's oh, an there's inkjet. Why are they... They have a special AirPod case inkjet. And it goes, oh, I see, because I've got a laser printer, so this is laser. Okay, yeah. They call it laser? I don't remember no, now. <laughs> I think you added the laser. I may have added the head. laser in my mind, yeah. yeah. It's I'm lasers. Gonna look. So what do we uh, think, Micah? Do you, I'll ask you first this time. What do you yeah. like? What do you think about the AirPods Pro 2? So everything so far. Um, the fact that there's a speaker on the uh, case itself, I quite like that it's, uh, I think some people will be annoyed by it, but I quite like that I get a little chime to let me know that it's uh, charging on a wireless charger in particular. Of course, these now can be charged with an Apple Watch Puck even. An Apple Watch Puck even. Even uh, an Apple kind of Watch nice. Puck. <laughs> <laughs> and so I like that, but um, the, the chime reminds me, oh yeah, I can use Find My and right. actually hear my AirPods Pro if they're lost somewhere, which is very cool. Uh, what kind of surprised me and made me think about sort of the, the history of AirPods is if you look at older AirPods, um, they, the grill is the, the grill that's kind of built into the inner part of the ear on previous AirPods was on the part that actually t almost touches against the inside of your ear. Uh, Apple has, uh, in these new ones, moved it to the top of the AirPod. And so it's just, it has me curious about kind of what change that made overall in terms of how uh, they've improved on the active noise cancellation and, and uh, everything involved with there. But I got to tell you, and, and then I am curious to hear more from you because you've, uh, you've got lots of different headphones and earbuds and whatnot. Oh, I have them all. But, the thing that has me most excited, and I actually did let out a little sound in the Steve Jobs Theater whenever they announced this, because this was the one thing I cared about, was that you can swipe up or down to control the volume finally. Yes. That's all I've ever wanted. Yes. I th I never knew that that it wasn't a feature. I just, I just, see, I, I always thought these were really overpriced. You can get very, very good quality sound from, say, the Samsung Galaxy Buds for a lot, like half the price. But I have to say, I'm kind of liking these. The adaptive noise cancellation is interesting uh, because if you turn that on, you could still hear people talking to you and stuff. But it, and it and if it's a if it's a jackhammer, as they showed at the uh, event, uh, it'll it's it's hypersensitive to that. It seems to work. These seem to work pretty pretty well. So much so that I've now hanging them from my neck at all times. <laughs> it's a badge of of honor. <laughs> Um, now, like how the, about the problem that we've all reported, which is that they've been sensitive to if you have other Apple devices switching over in the middle of a phone call? 
Anybody yeah, I turned that, you you, turn that you've off. got to turn, I, I recommend turning that off. Yeah. Um, so this is a feature where you can switch between uh, two options. There's uh, automatically here, let me find it so that I'm saying it correctly. Um, connect to this iPhone or connect to this Mac or connect to this iPad. And there's an option between automatically or uh. when last connected to this iPhone. I turn on when last connected to this blank on everything because then I'm in charge. Listen, I am the captain now, AirPods 2. Uh, I get to choose when I connect to whatever device because yes, uh, I don't I don't like the way that Apple has made some adjustments to it. It's gotten a little bit better, but not enough. Um, in fact, earlier today, luckily it was after I was done with iOS today, um, it tried to connect. I, this is an iPhone that is my camera here and AirPods tried to connect to that and it actually caused the camera to pause. And as I said, it was between shows, so it wasn't a big deal. But if that happened during a show, that's kind of annoying. So yeah. Yeah, I don't like that feature. <laughs> yeah. Um, it happened several times before this call because I'm using my AirPods Pro 2 right now. And anytime I moved like my iPad or my iPhone, they would switch so quickly. It's pretty annoying. So where, where do we change that? Uh, I didn't even know that was a setting. Uh, uh, so if you're on your iPhone, yeah. then you launch the settings app. And now in iOS 16, you'll see up at the top right below family yeah. uh, is a new section that says your AirPods. Yeah. Isn't that um, nice? My, my Max has showed up there too, which is kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. So you click into that and then I'm trying to get it to show up on mine. Now. I have it up uh, over here. Okay. So you have noise cancellation, transparency, model. Yeah, keep scrolling. Connect to this phone. Oh, here it is, right at the top. There it is. Connect this phone automatically when last connected. Wait a minute. Choose how AirPods connect to this phone. AirPods Pro can always automatically connect to this phone or only connect if this phone was the last device you used with them. In other words, it's sticky. It stays yes. phone uh, until you a intentionally go to another device. That okay. is correct. That, and you would want to do that on, on any on device all, you use them with. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, other ones might try to grab it away. Uh, because unfortunately, Apple sets it to automatically by default. Right. And that is not the fun behavior, in my humble opinion. So there are also some new features on this. Uh, one of them, Stephen, you can describe, uh, is to test the tips. They come with the medium tips, but there's also a, a small, extra small, small and large. Did you do the... When you yeah, that's the you can test the ear tip fit, which you could do actually with the previous models, oh, okay. um, and it will check the seal around it. But what's new actually is the personalized spatial audio, which you can do with Take or a, without the AirPods Pro two in hand. A picture where it will of your scan ear. Scan your ear <laughs> with the uh, true depth sensor and create a personalized spatial audio experience that way. I haven't been able to tell really if it makes a big difference, I but I will say the AirPods Pro two. The noise cancellation and transparency, I do think it's noticeably improved from the first generation, okay, good. especially transparency mode. I mean, it, it can yep. feel like I don't have anything in my ears a lot of times yes. when that transparency mode is on. And that's vastly improved. Yes. This is, they're really a long uh, way toward uh, an over-the-counter hearing aid, to be honest with you. Um, th the quality is really good. So I did the, you know, so I didn't realize this, this previously. So I put them in. It plays music. And then, it, and it worked. It said, no, no, your left ear is way too loose. So I pushed it in and said, no, nah, <laughs> try a bigger, <laughs> didn't say bigger, but so try another uh, tip. So I tried the large tip and then it went, oh, that's good. I guess no leakage at all. Wow. And it's true. Those were the right tips for me. Um, so that's a good feature. And then, but it is a little hard to do the ear scan because you can't look at the phone. It's awkward. <laughs> so I had to get a mirror <laughs> And hold the mirror up so I could see what was on the phone, <laughs> so if it was seeing my ear. And then if it's too close, it says it stops, and you have to go, oh, okay. And then if it's too far, it stops. So you have to get between 10 and 20 inches, right looking at, nice at your ear, and then you slightly tip your head back and forward. Yeah. It took it me a just while. just plain works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and then yeah. that's the thing is, do you notice a difference? I don't know. I can't, yeah. I don't know. I do think the tips are improved in their material because the first AirPods Pro would fall out of my ear sometimes. And I actually got the Comply Foam ear tips that yep. are like earplug yeah, material. Right. And those really kept them in. But with the AirPods Pro 2, I've been just using the tips they come with. And it actually grabs my inner ear canal, I think, better. Even so much as when I like pull them out of my ear, they can almost like go inside out as, I, <laughs> yeah. as they come yeah. out. Yeah, that happened but to it me. Makes yeah. it, it's a great seal. Yeah. I'm very Micah, happy. I'm surprised how good these sound, to be honest. That's a question I wanted to ask Micah when he was talking about the new, uh, you know, being able to uh, 
be use a, a touch command since and, and mm -hmm. swiping using swipe commands to change the volume do they stay in your ears when you do that uh that was yeah, the thing so, that was, that was, i was curious about when I, um, I, heard. I it did not yeah i didn't move them around since they're so lightweight but what i what's not clear to me um i i haven't tried it without doing this but if you look on the uh, apple.com slash AirPods hyphen pro page, when they show that section, um, they use little green circles to represent like the movement, right? And on the back of the AirPod stem, you can see a green circle, meaning that to hold and it this is the way I've phone. done it. You're meant yeah. to support it while you, yeah. you, so you put one finger on the back and then you rock it. I have not tried kind of just going eh, and putting my finger on the front and trying to move <laughs> no. it down. This is a very natural, this is kind of what you're going to end up wanting to do like grabbing it a because you exactly. just grab it and then your your index finger goes up and down you also will be grabbing it to change the transparency mode to to next next track there's you know there's a whole bunch of things and it gives you a nice little click siri yeah, yeah. siri how do oh oh wait a minute somebody's talking to me uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh what was that uh you just, you how do i do word, how do yeah. i do the sh a shlomo do i you just say, "Hey, you know who?" Hey, Shlomo, and it'll work. Wow. Yeah, you don't okay. have to. You don't have to press any no. buttons or anything. No, it's nice. It's good. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I think these are, these are pretty good. And uh, since I can drive them with my gin ginormous watch, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think for for uh, working out, this is going to be a really great pair. You know, leave your phone at yeah. home. And I gotta say, I, just, I love that lanyard loop on the side. It's yeah, so yeah. nice. I a lot of people. In fact, my old AirPods Pro, I ordered a case. You know, a twelve mm -hmm. south case that had a lanyard connection but yeah this is nice are you worried about it getting banged up a little bit uh yeah i i am a little bit um I in case, case. That makes this lanyard actually does also make a case but i'm waiting for nomad uh because i that's what i used to rock i used to have the nomad that was beautiful yeah, yeah. sponsor on the network of course yeah. we should mention but yeah, yeah they that's that's what i used to use for my airpods so i'm waiting for them to come out with one that just supports the built-in uh lanyard loop do you need a different case um I have oh, pro let me try shoes from the old pros. Well, so there's no speaker holes at the bottom of the oh, case, so, you, so might, yeah. you would not get as good as a uh, Find My. Right. And I think outside of that, though, um, it, it should be the same. Let me try putting it on here and see what happens. This is I'll also say now that Apple's added the uh, U1 chip to the AirPods Pro case, please add it to the Apple TV remote and also maybe yes. a speaker there so you can hear it falls on the yes. sofa. That's all. Thank you. I actually have a rubber <laughs> case for my. Uh, Apple TV remote that has a lanyard on it. It does I have make one a one with an air big... tag inside. Yeah. It's a silicone the one for Nomad. Air tag. Yeah. Oh, a silicone. Yeah. Yeah, silicone. This is the fact that this is essentially an air tag now is great. You know, it won't be hard to find these, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Unless you have um <laughs> well, maybe I won't if get you have into chihuahuas, it. I've got this. No, I've got an ongoing issue yeah. with um, with Find My where because of a something happened in the the database side of things, uh, Find My just does not work on my iCloud account, oh. and I have this ongoing support issue. But, but that's anyway, you. Uh, that's just yeah, you. exactly. That's yeah. just a me thing. So that's why that's I wasn't saying anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the new my case on the new one, and yeah, it fits just fine. So you oh. could technically use this. Okay. But good again, to know. You might you don't want have then the, drill out you holes the for the, yeah. <laughs> to find my speakers yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, and you said you're looking for a case that has that let that's a pass through for the lanyard built into the. Uh, yeah, so case. I guess instead it would just kind of have a little, AirPod. you know, uh, oval on the yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I might just customize this case though. Now that I think about it, I've got a Dremel. I can make some little holes for the speakers. And but do you have a laser engraver? <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, <laughs> yes, the word on the site is there's no laser mentioned anywhere. It's just engrave. But yeah. does engrave not engrave mean implies cut into? Yeah. Yes. Not not make a raised yes. area. That's emboss or something else. I don't know. It, well, it's it not even raised though. It's just kind of like printed on. Just like the made in California, you know, design in California, made in China thing on the back it's uh, if i it run my the, finger across that i can feel it my nail across that on the back i can feel a slight difference in the material yeah i was going to say that if it's sorry if Andy. they're using a, if they're using a chemical process that actually melts a layer of plastic of gray plastic into the plastic that could be a great ah, okay i could get down with that yeah um i was trying to see if i could find some uh some video of how this works but i don't Oh yeah, here it is. Here it is. This is the uh, machine that Apple uses to print onto uh, AirPods. 
Oh, and neat. It's using heat. <laughs> no, it's not. What? Okay, what is this? This is not. This is how this is how plates ceramic plates are uh, yeah. printed. Yeah. They have a little rubber uh, uh, thing that they dip stamp, in the ink, yeah. and then it uh, it paints right it's onto a, the plate. It goes. It's a bowl shaped stamp. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Clever. Coincidentally, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's finished. exactly though how they do this, right? That they have, a, they have Apple would design some box that goes into it and it goes. Yeah, of course. But it just it just goes to show how weird this category is. No matter who's making it, that it doesn't matter how if, if you can be up there up there on stage with here's like histograms of how good the audio is, and here's how advanced my technology is for making sure that it's uh, it's doing adaptive net noise cancellation. Here's all the other features we're doing in to cook the software to make uh, make uh, human speech easier to comprehend. If the thing doesn't stay in your ear. It's a bad. It's it's a fail, and that's a fail for an individual person who decides that. Well, I, I gee, I tried a pair of, ear, of AirPods once. They kept falling out my ears. I couldn't stand them. I bought a pair of Sony's. They worked just fine. It has nothing to do with the technology. It has to do with how did the, how this person decided to shape their ears and things like. And for me, things like uh, uh, have, having uh, having a touch commands on the earbud, it's actually kind of a negative because naturally, over the course, if I'm wearing earbuds sometimes for like two or three hours at a time when I'm out and about, and naturally they just kind of work themselves loose and it, it's kind of a bummer when i can't just simply give them a little extra shove in without like suddenly suddenly activating uh, the the virtual assistant or suddenly like changing tracks like no i'm sorry i just i just wanted to sort of shove it into my ear hole a little bit more please ignore this as a command so it's it's a weird very weird category and it's a, it's this is why it's i think it's kind of a scramble where apple is absolutely competing with every other maker of these things to uh, for 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 brand loyalty at this point well, we rehearsed his funeral uh, a few minutes ago, but now it's official. The bearded teacher is no longer with us. <laughs> <laughs> it's got, you know, it's lucky he got to hear us say all the nice things about him. Uh, but yeah, his power is is. Uh, is uh, can I, can, can I say that, that that was a very very generous act on his part, where it's like you, you knowing that you have twenty minutes, but to shut to shut down things, to send final emails. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be out of power for a little bit of while. I might I might be off the grid, and you decided to like burn all that power to talk to us Aww, and to talk to the, the listeners know. and the viewers. Very that kind. was a very very generous and, act. And finally, his his uh, studio just went. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the bearded teacher is at beard.fm. Uh, thank you, Stephen Robles, for uh, being here as long as you could be. And uh, it's uh, which is great, actually, to get his reviews. He's also at AppleInsider.com yes. uh, of both the uh, new AirPods Pro 2 and the Apple Watch Ultra. Especially as someone who had all the hard, I don't, I don't have either of these pieces of hardware we've been talking about. So yeah, it was, yeah. it was like it was, he was, he was a very, very valuable addition today. Furthermore, Absolutely. our chat room has done some research. And from White Dog Engraving comes this information. How does Apple engraving work? Apple devices are engraved using high-powered laser engravers. <gasps> okay. Lasers. Lasers. The uh, Apple Pencil, the iPod, the iPod Touch, and the AirPods are all engraved that way. Uh, so... So maybe like when it's burning it, it does cause a slight bubble, which is why it feels raised against the surface. And that's why I'm yeah. saying it, it feels that way. It, it is guess, plastic, right? So uh, just yeah. heating it would probably do something. This is what oh, it looks like. Yeah, change the color. This right. is what it, it, yeah. So it's 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 more like a, a cutter than an engraver, a heater, you know, than an engraver. So almost like a wood, what are those wood uh, burners yeah. where you can. Yeah. Uh, very much like that. Yeah, like a, a Glowforge. Yeah, I think, but it's 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 good that that's actually legit because uh, you the when you say engraving or embossing, the the implication is that it doesn't matter how much this how much this thing gets gets rubbed on, it's not going to come exactly. off because it is because sometimes I, I, you get burned by that when you say, oh look, I had my name put on this things, and then eight months later, like half the letters are gone because it really is yes. just something they apply to the surface. So yeah, you, you can count, I think you can count on Apple to want to make sure that if they decide to go for personalization that your personalization absolutely sticks. That's, I'm kind that's of, a, that, that's a cell phone. I'm kind of bummed though. Uh and I know you are too Micah. A we would have been able to still able to get them. And B I love it that the it's more than engraving. It's yeah. somehow burnt into the memory of the little case. Yeah. And and the fact that it shows up on the phone on the too that's just kind of neat. Wow. And now Apple supports you can use your own Memoji as one of the engraving options. So <sighs> not just emoji I might now, have to but buy a whole other set of these. <laughs> Take them back. Yeah. Get a get a whole Take set. Take them back. Apple 
Yeah. Or they could be, uh, you could, you could give that to someone for, for Christmas or you your family go. members for Christmas yeah. and you just get one with you. I emoji. threw out the tips though. Damn it. Yeah. Oh but, but no. Again, this, well, Why did you do that? Okay, well, I'm thinking, am I ever going to change my ear size? No. So what do I need these for? If you ever get stung by a bee, God forbid, <gasps> what are you going to do? Oh my Near God. Near your ear. My ear gets all swole up and then I don't and have you a you still need to listen to your tip. music and now you don't have the extra small tip. So you get into MMA, get one of those cauliflower ear deals? Uh, yeah, exactly. Whenever yeah. you start boxing, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll remember to wear protection <laughs> when I do from now on. Stephen, yeah, yeah. uh, we wish you well. I hope everybody in Tampa uh, yes. it's, does well. Uh, Hurricane Ian, Ian is on the way. And uh, yikes, 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 yikes. Uh, now, RJDJ2000 in our chat room says... Uh, Leo, more likely it's a fiber laser they're using. A small 30-watt machine could do it quite nicely and way faster than a CO2 laser. laser. It's a What does fiber, fiber laser do? A fiber laser. Does it burn fiber oh, onto? I, I met, no, I met, I would imagine that it's kind of like a dot matrix printer, only except For the laser light is being, is being, is being come, basically have a bundle of fibers in the, in the shape of a matrix and that you're firing individual dots ah. of it to create that image. They're widely used in industry because of the variety of uh, temperatures and frequencies they okay. can they can do so, you so don't burn through the device into the yeah. uh, electronics yeah. well yeah it's exact it, it you know they they set them up to do exactly what they need to do for that particular thing so that's cool all right thank you for that uh, rj dj 2000 <laughs> if, if finally, human, finally a, way anyway. to, a way to revive the image writer brand they could call it the the image writer <gasps> laser burner i love one of those That'd be do so you think cool. apple offers those on its uh repair replace program i know but they do say as steven mentioned you can go to the fifth avenue store and they'll engrave it as you wait but you won't get that special programming <laughs> Oh, oh no! Really I mean, I want to get the fiber laser that, that yeah. Apple uses. That's I feel like I've got I've got a broken one. Like it's not as. Good I as know it's not full. It's not yeah. whole. It's not true. And and, <sighs> and again, with, because because Apple is is really promoting Find My as not just a, oh by the way, just like every just like every other phone manufacturer, there's some sort of a dingus in here that will make it beep remotely if you lost your phone. They're ma they're basically turning in turning Find My into a whole platform. So the idea of making Find My not just the name of the product, but also here's a, here's a visual identifier for what this thing looks like uh, it's when it when it's working correctly it's a good boon when as often happens it's not working correctly and again i'm on i'm on I, i'm on the commuter rail train and my ipad keeps saying hey I, I, hey i found a new i found a pair of, of airpods nearby do you want to pair them and i say i don't own a pair of airpods so please no never, never yeah that. that's it you're right see, that's you can, you can see you can see like if, or even if inside your household if you know that yeah. hey uh, yeah this is this is actually my, my my spouse's airpods i don't want those paired because she is actually like two floors down applying polyurethane to a, to a carpentry project. I don't think that she needs to hear uh, my, my hear my live stream of whatever I do. I'm clearly right you've now. been hanging out in the Laporte household a lot. I can get a fiber <laughs> laser for a mere three thousand oh, dollars on Amazon, all right. so I can just make my own. But you can't you know, see. I, I, I've been, I've been, the ID right. in here. That's, I, that's the magic. That yeah. is the magic. That is what I want. <laughs> See, Micah, me, meanwhile, I've been thinking about, you know what? This image writer idea is not such a bad idea because you could obviously, like, you're not going to be using the print cartridge. You can actually build a cartridge that has its own LiPo battery in it, has its own, like, laser, like, generator at the head so Ooh. that it is actually, you're actually using the existing uh, carriage and, and movement concern to actually, career, to actually fire off that laser. That's, this is, this is, I, I, I need to, I need to start working on a Kickstarter proposal because <laughs> I bet I could, I could raise a couple hundred thousand dollars for a product that I'm never, ever, ever going to be able to ship. <laughs> so I th I think we uh, we can safely say there were at least three pairs of thumbs up for the uh, Ultra, two pairs of thumbs up for the Ultra, me and yeah. Stephen, and three pairs of thumbs up for the AirPod Pro 2. Apple's come up with two very nice products. Uh, and actually, I'm very happy as long as we're talking with the uh, tw the 14 Pro Max. It's been, it's been uh, I love the always on mode, I have to say, even more yeah. than Dynamic Island. That's a, that's a game Tell changer. Me Tell me more about that. The reason I ask is because I've seen it go uh, two ways, and I'm kind of in the second camp where I don't know if it's just my anxiety brain or whatever, but every time I look at my phone and see that it's on, I want to reach and hit that right. side button and make it go dark. And then, of course, it goes bright instead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, wait. You'll have to reprogram right. yourself. Yeah, yeah, I've got to reprogram myself. And I, I guess I'm always like, I, I, I'm being 
consider it of battery life, but it hasn't been an issue. And so again, it's all just retraining, but some people just didn't have that from the get go. And I want to know you people, how, how did you not have any anxiety about it uh, from the start? You just like to look at your time on your uh, phone or what's, what's the deal? Um, I have to say there is there. I mean, you, I, I might have to talk to Rosemary be, it would be nice to have a focus mode that made it really dark you can you know mm -hmm. have a dark wallpaper black wallpaper and it dim it and, and i think i could do a, a a focus mode that would do all of that because lisa married the wrong guy she likes a bedroom <laughs> that is pitch black right oh me too i got leds job, coming out of my ass well that's not quite true but uh, i hopefully not <laughs> <laughs> there, it's well, a new Bert, technology well, well, it's we, a We've seen the photos from Burning Man. You have nothing to be ashamed of. We thought it was very creative. <laughs> I was going healthcare and you were Burning Man. Needless to Medically say. Medically contraindicated. Yes, everywhere yes, in the room. Yes, we've got, Aunt Leo's got the benefit of quite a brain trust here. He's, he's a lucky, lucky man, as are all the listeners. Everywhere in the room, there are lights, 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 lights everywhere. And um, and this is just one more. In fact, she complained last night. She says, like, the sun hitting me in the face. Said, oh, you don't have the sleep mode turned on? Well, I do. It's it's darker. Can it go off completely? Yeah. On If you have um, the, the focus mode that's called sleep, I do. then well, it will oh, it's completely not, turn off the display. Does it have to be called sleep? <laughs> well, so there's a built-in one that is called. Yeah, sleep. yeah. I think that's the one. Uh, I think that's the one I have. It's. It it's, should when it's on the charger. It should turn off yeah, while it's in sleep mode. Maybe not. I don't know. It's. Uh, I didn't think it was. Hmm. But I'll have to check that because mine does. I know at night mine is off because I am like you don't Lisa like light in either. wanting. Yeah. No light yeah. in the bedroom because that's not that's for, bad for you. Conducive for sleep. Yeah. Uh, let me turn on. I'm going to turn on sleep mode and then I'm going to plug it in. Um, and then I will uh, lock well, the screen I and believe see if you. it goes off. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm checking to be sure uh, that it actually, yeah, yeah, it's completely off now. So, so I'm making a new should. focus that is called sleep, sleep focus, while you're heading to bed together. Okay. I thought I was using that. People, none allowed. Apps, none allowed. Options, show on silence notifications, high notification badges, uh, and then... You oh, you sure can customize screen the screen is turned on. Yeah, so customize screen. screen. So choose a lock screen or home screen page. Um, but 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 actually, but, go back. Do you see right under that where it says options? Yeah. Tap on options and make sure sleep screen is turned on. Oh, I don't have that in my. That's notification <gasps> options. Then I don't know if it's the actual sleep focus or if it's one that you've just made. Schedule that way. focus filters. No, it's called sleep focus. I, I just selected a new oh, one. Oh, you did. Uh, huh. Well, all right. This I is a mystery because I can choose the home screen, the lock screen and the watch screen, but I don't see any, you know, off choices. Interesting. Uh, I mean, I could make a very dark lock screen. I ended up choosing a moon, um, you know, because I thought, well, it's night, but that's still, you know, even in, when it's dimmed, which it is, it's dimmed. It's just not off. So yeah. I don't, I don't know. So here, uh, do I add John, a, a focus filter? So. Uh, there's this, this is the one that I've got turned on right now. And you should see in this options section, yeah. right underneath the customization, there should be an option that says sleep screen and show time. And oh, that says. That's another options. See, that was doing the first options. Oh, under okay. Notifications. Yeah. This is a new option. Sleep screen. This simplifies your phone lock screen to reduce distractions. Yeah. So that's while you're winding down, that will make it so that those, uh, that uh, not as will much it shows up see notifications. It should then, once you have locked your phone and it's charging, it should turn off the phone completely, yes, okay. or the display completely. Okay. So I don't have to choose a sleep screen. It will. I will have it be... Yeah. Right, well, we'll that, try that tonight. Kind of extra stuff we'll try that to tonight. Do, okay. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> well, yours is doing it, yeah. so it must, be, it must be possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, okay. And it, and it is... It is... Uh, uh, it adds so much value to this device, particularly when you get dialed in correctly. When they they do when they do it really well enough, it's the it's it's illuminated just enough so that you can, you can almost just see it through peripheral vision, like not through the cones of your eyes, but like the color insensitive, light more sensitive rods in your eyes. And that's when like the times in the middle of the night where you wake up for a sec, you just want to know, oh damn, I woke up. Do I is is does is there any point to going back to sleep or not? 
and or, gee, my phone just made a noise when it's not supposed to make a noise. Is there an alert that I really need to pay attention to? And these and all and always on display, uh, even when like if there's nothing to notify you about, is it really enhances the thing. It turns into a smart display. And when you're talking about devices that you spend like six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand, twelve hundred dollars for that extra piece of value of this thing that's always going to be on your nightstand anyway, it's just a really, really great thing to have. All right. It's all on you, Micah. Tonight's the night. <laughs> I'll let you know. Yes. It I'll should let... <laughs> turn off. I'll let you know in the morning. Uh, let's take a little break. Uh, you're watching Mac Break Weekly. Andy Anatko, Micah Sargent filling in for Jason Snell who has the day off. Uh, Alex is also out. and We're very grateful to Stephen Robles from uh, Apple Insider. He filled in until his power. <laughs> His power went off. Our show today brought to you, and I presume, John Ashley, you're an expert in this, by the new tech TriCaster 2 Elite. That's what we do with all of our production, the most complete live production system on the planet, and some new features that have just recently come out. New tech, as you might know, offers a full line of TriCasters. In fact, when we started to do video, wow, it's now uh, about 14 years ago. Uh, I was trying to figure out how we do this. Talk to Alex Lindsay. He said, no, get a hardware switcher. And I said, I can't afford a hardware switcher. <laughs> so I said, I'm getting a TriCaster. It was the best choice ever because as we've grown, TriCaster has grown with us. So the first time out, I got the, you know, the least expensive model, but we've slowly improved and improved as time goes by because we have new needs, new capabilities. And now we've got the TriCaster 2 Elite. It's, uh, it's an all-encompassing digital media solution designed to create content for the internet, mobile, and television distribution. Late last year, they uh, unleashed an updated version of the TriCaster 2 Elite with a lot of new features. The Live Call Connect feature, which has been around for a while, has now been added uh, support for Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and FaceTime as inputs to any production. Plus, selectable audio and video return now enables the TriCaster 2 Elite operators to view an audio return, just like any other output, allowing greater flexibility. They have this new neural voice isolation tool that cleans up the audio automatically. It's using AI. It can cancel or reduce background noise, automatically detect voices, maintains uh, your, of course, audio quality. It's interesting because you think TriCaster is all about video, but no, they realize... And they're absolutely right. Audio is very, very important. And so they have very, very good audio support. Lots of new features, flexibility, power, but still simple enough for even an idiot like me to use. In fact, one of the ways they make it simple is macros. And now they've got variable support in macros. John and others will program the macros for me so I can go in my office and do stuff with just a simple key press makes it so much easier for me to do the lower thirds, to do, do all sorts of stuff that I really am not going to be able to do on my own. It's a dynamic and powerful tool that allows operators now to nest macros to deliver complex productions more easily. The TriCaster 2 Elite now supports encoding three channels in anything from HD to UHD at the same time, which is really awesome. They've also brought the live panel builder into the TriCaster, meaning you can create your own user interfaces, customize each preset within the user interface. Again, a great way to have it set up just right for the production you're doing. And if you've got distributed workflows, it makes them simpler, more cohesive. And of course, you never compromise on quality with the TriCaster. It's the best. That's why so many television channels, uh, local sports, churches, Use the TriCaster. It's a transformative technology, better than broadcast. In fact, since its arrival in 2020, TriCaster 2 Elite has offered an incredibly powerful live production system for almost any kind of streamer and broadcaster. And the very latest updates have just added, added even more power. I love it. Uh, the NDI GenLock tool allows TriCaster 2 Elite users to match outputs to a common sync pulse. So it makes it very easy to sync up your video for pinpoint accuracy. Great. You can use it for remote workflows even. Alpha channel can be sent through one of the mix outs, which brings post-production closer to live. Users can use the keying on a TriCaster to feed graphics or real-time 3D creation tools. Uh, I don't even know what I'm saying. Our team does, and that's the important part. <laughs> they are really good. And don't forget the TriCaster 1 Pro. It's an evolution in modern storytelling for producers, content creators, and publishers with future-ready capabilities streamlined 
video production system, live video production system, including live call connect support for 4K UHD switching, live streaming, recording, and data driven. Yeah, when we started with the TriCaster, 4K was just a twinkle in an engineer's eye, and now it's everywhere. Explore the latest in the TriCaster family. If I'll tell you the best thing to do, because everybody's needs are different, visit go.newtech.com slash twit dash TV. Go.newtech.com slash twit dash TV. There's an easy-to-use interactive guide there that'll let you go through it and figure out which TriCaster is right for you. Just press that big start button. Go.newtech.com slash twit dash TV. Thank you, Newtech TriCaster, for making our productions sing. We couldn't do it without you. We really, really appreciate it. I don't know if this is a one-off uh, or if there's a problem here. This is from a uh, Substack uh, newsletter called the Runner's Newsletter. Uh, and it's one guy, but he did an analysis with a lot of technology on the Apple Watch and how it measures stride and running. And one thing he found, and he coined the term erratic mode. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> it gives you some idea of the problem. Uh the biggest issue since Watch OS 8 is that it runs most of the time in what I call erratic mode. Um, now, he says he's able to get it to settle down. For instance, if he pauses, he has to cross a busy street in his run. And one of the reasons he, he noticed this is because he does the exact same run all the time. A 9.7 kilometer run through busy areas of a city, uh, trees and water. Uh, Nike usually logged between 9.6 and 9.8 kilometers, but sometimes had weird swings. When I started using Apple's workout app with watchOS 7, results were similar. The first 50 to 150 meters had tracking issues, like it was getting started, but most of the time everything worked okay with some weird measurements now and then. Since watchOS 8, I've had a lot of issues with tracking my runs. I have logged 135 runs with watchOS 8, a few more on 9 since the release. 128 of them on the same exact route. Uh, he says when he stops at a light and presses the pause button, it usually fixes the erratic mode. So you can even see the graphs here that he has, a collection of speed plots where it's in erratic mode and then it fixes itself. About 80% of the cases start in erratic mode. It lasts about 18 minutes on average, but varies a lot. It makes, frankly, the statistics kind of not so useful. Yeah, that's concerning. Yeah. Now, I have to point out, this is one guy, he says he contacted Apple. Uh, they gave him all sorts of things to do. But this, and this is the thing that's a little scary. When support finally, after many calls, contacted an engineer, they told me the errors were within their accepted margins. Oh. Uh, I think sometimes... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know about you, Andy, but one of the... I, I see a lot anytime we're looking at different uh, situations where people are contacting support and Apple support is uh, helping out. You see all of these different possible responses and all of these different answers. And, and it can be just, you know, out of the blue, uh, one one type of answer or the other. And I I always struggle uh, about whether I should suggest that people kind of take that with a grain of salt or if. Well, that's true with all something. customer service. I mean, really, and right. I'm sure Apple's customer service guys are better trained than many. But ultimately, you can't hire enough people who are really skilled. So you give them a notebook, you give them some training, and they're going to do what they're taught and trained how to do. And that's a very, they're almost yeah. on rails, a very narrow scope. But yeah. that's why when he, this is the thing that's concerning. Yeah, I'd expect that from, you know, the first line support. But when they escalated to an engineer, that's the highest escalation. You know, somebody's actually working on the product. And they said, no, no, that's within our margin of error. We don't expect it to be more accurate than that. That's a little bit interesting to me. The only reason I mention this. Yeah, no, you're you're, you're right. I, my uh, my I react that way because there are better ways to convey the same information that yeah is a little bit more polite. It's 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 like when someone someone's telling you something you already know and you say, say I know that as opposed to I think you're right. Yes, that you're right about that. Uh, but and also this is a customer who's unsatisfied with their product and that does sound a little bit snippy um it's even though they even though the engineer might be absolutely correct that sometimes a customer is asking for a level of 
purity that is just not the thing was just not sold as nonetheless when someone is trained there there are people who, there are people that are serious trainers and also they're just serious about completing those rings and and, and getting that data logged i have a i have a friend uh <laughs> I, have, I have a friend shout out to marie at the metropolitan opera uh she's uh one of her co- she uh, posted an instagram uh, last week about uh, final dress rehearsals for one of the productions and she can't wear her apple watch because of course this isn't 1893 <laughs> this is 1890 whatever and so she's wearing it strapped around her leg to make sure she gets wow. credit for for all of the steps that she's taking wow. like while during that day and, and and while being on stage so this is the sort of person who when they con- contact customer service Service, say, look, I'm not getting credit for the workouts that I'm doing, either because of ego, which is fine, or even because, look, I'm training. I need to have this data because I'm planning to do something that is outside my normal limits uh, in, in, in two months' time. I need to be prepared for that. So, yeah, you'd, you'd hope that they'd be a little bit more, I what, don't know. What's unclear is it may be that that's his watch and that we're getting yeah. better results, but the engineer is saying, yeah, sometimes some of these watches, it's not very accurate, or it may be... I mean, remember, this is on your wrist. It's not the ideal. The temperature uh, yeah. is a perfect example. They don't say it's body temperature. They say it's wrist temperature. But you'd have to look carefully to really see that. And they imply that they're measuring body temperature. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I, I guess if you're a runner, maybe you should, maybe I think we need more information. Maybe you should look at a Garmin instead. I don't know. Uh, I have seen people say, yeah, this is nice. For seventy ninety nine. it's good. It's not a Garmin Forerunner. It's not the it's not the thousand mm. dollar Garmin. So I don't know if uh, I don't know. I just yeah, I'm not I mean, raising. There's a part of me that just goes, I that that kind of makes sense because you've got yeah. one device that yes, now it is more heavily focused on uh, people who are active and doing all this and that and the other. But it is also still an Apple Watch that has yeah. all of the other features that an Apple Watch has. But if you buy a purpose built device then absolutely you're going to get uh, better metrics out of that. I, and so it's kind of a, it's a back and forth, I think. But with the knowledge that, yes, you're spending more for this, you expect it to be premium, you expect it to do all of these things that uh, it should do. And if it's not exactly accurate, then I guess it comes down to kind of where we're seeing health measurements go in general, where before it was all about this nitty gritty measurement and now it's more about trends and the, the numbers yeah. themselves aren't as important. So if you use those data points as a runner uh, from the perspective of getting the exact right number versus these sort of um, coach messages that say, oh, you know, you're running slower than you did last time. Do you want to pick it up? Uh, and the stuff that the Apple Watch provides, then, yeah, I think the Garmin is probably a better bet for you. Yeah. Excellent point. Yeah. Uh, so Garmin, in his latest newsletter, <laughs> speculating... Mm -hmm. But, you know, when Mark says something, you know, and, and we've talked about this when Renee used to be on the show, he would say, now you have to understand, Mark says two different th categories. There's I have from heard from sources and I'm thinking. This is in the I'm thinking category. But we are so close to what would be an October event that I don't, I think this rises to a higher level than Mark just speculating. I feel like he's got some inside information. He says, maybe not an event next month maybe they'll do it all by press release uh, and I'm guessing that he wouldn't have published that so close to the event unless he had pretty he had a pretty high confidence that there wasn't going to be an event hmm. I, I but, wanted to hear I want to hear Andy first <laughs> okay <laughs> Um, well, first of all, this this another thing that uh, Renee very wisely said was that there's a difference between things that he says in his Bloomberg column and things that he says in his newsletter. And I think that he said this in his newsletter. Uh, so that does, so that doesn't mean that he's because making Bloomberg has different that, standards for stuff in the publication as right. opposed. So yeah. I think and, and I think historically he, the the great thing about him is that he has a really a great track record and also a provable track record. You can go back and see the correlation between things that he said and things 
things he speculated about and things that actually happened. Then you go back and see how he speculated and how he uh, reported certain things. So a newsletter f- f- from, from German says that he has some good information. He doesn't have it absolutely on lock, but it's valuable enough for, for people that he thought he'd mention in the, in the newsletter. Um, when we think about, but when you, we think about stuff that we're, uh, that Apple's rumored to announce in October, we are thinking about things that could simply be, uh, again, my, my dream is Mac mini, but just take all the really good uh, new ultra, uh, ultra M1s or M2 processors and basically up, update it from the basic M1 that came out two years ago to a practical modern uh, modern CPU. It doesn't even have to be a completely reinvented, revitalized one. Uh, just give just give me something modern that can have four displays on it, etc. Uh, we're thinking about maybe a maybe an update to the iPad, although that's not certainly a lock. And we're wondering if there if Apple's going to decide to release something that could be called a Mac Pro this year, although that may or may not happen. And all of those things, there, a Mac Pro would have to, you would think there would have to be an event, but they could just simply announce it this this year and then release it later on. So I don't think that, I don't think that the idea of, of Apple doing press releases uh, is out of is out of bounds here. I think that that's a, that's a very practical thing for a uh, practical thing to consider. Uh, and also realize when you say press releases we don't we're, we're not talking about everybody wakes up and suddenly at 9 a.m eastern time there's a press release and there's so, there's stuff on our inboxes we're also talking about certain people have already been called to cupertino certain people have been you have been uh, under nda about this and testing them up for two weeks and there are videos that are going to suddenly appear on 12 very very important and influential youtube channels all at once so i don't i there is nothing about this that I think is silly. I don't. I wouldn't put money on it either way. Uh, but I don't think that's a silly thing for uh, to to think about. Micah, <sighs> I. This is a tough one um, because everything that I knew suggested that there would be some sort of uh, event happening in October. That there would be uh, because let's look at like a year ago. Um, because the, the argument here is that the M2 was already announced, and so we know about the M2, so we could just do press release for the rest of these devices, because they're all going to basically have the M2, be it the iPads or the Macs. But when we did it with the M1, when Apple did it with the M1, they had the initial announcement of the M1 with the lower uh, spec devices, but then they had another event where they showed the M1 with that uh, with the Pro with the Max version, where you had two of them side by side, and that whole thing was announced, and uh, it was all very exciting. Uh, the argument could be that that was a time to have an event because they were showing, revealing that two uh, chips could be laid side by side and connected and they needed to explain that a little bit more. And so this year they don't really need to explain it. But I just, I don't know, it's kind of a lot of devices, potential devices to be announced in just press release form. Um, So it just, uh, it, it runs contrary to what I would expect and in that way, I find it interesting if what he's saying is is true. But yes, of, of course, always with the caveat that uh, this was one of those. I think that they may not because of this, that and the other. I just I don't know. I think they still will. Uh, he says Apple might have not have enough fare left in 2022 for another big event, not enough gas in the tank. And it's true that those are, you know, those are big productions. They've got to do a lot of filming and they've got to do a lot of, you know, production and getting people out there um he does agree with you andy that you know there'll be a m2 and m2 pro mac minis that's good news for all of us mac mini lovers m2 pro and m2 max 14 and 16 inch macbook pros m2 11 inch and 12.9 inch ipad pros he also says there might be an update to the apple tv with an a14 and a ram boost uh, he does say i don't think the m2 based mac pro will be released in 2023 this is contrary to what apple's already promised but you know he says none of these new projects products is a major departure from apple so so that's why he says he's thinking but again the fact that he says it's so close to when we would start getting invitations uh it, it makes me give think there's a higher level of certainty now i've also heard from people who were at the apple event that there were winks and nudges that uh, from Apple employees, like see you next month, <laughs> kind of thing. So I, 
So, you know, I don't know what to think. Um, Apple certainly yeah, could do another lost. event. They get a lot of attention for another event. But, you know, maybe they're tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's also possible that this was, given when Mark is talking about this, that it was a change in the plans. It could be that uh, originally that was in, because of the, the fact that they can pre-record these and that they can, you know, set them up, uh, at a, that part of it at least at a moment's notice, and because it would, in theory, be on their own campus, they're not having to uh, fit it around some large venue that doesn't belong to them, that they have to plan out even more, and I guess... If you've just done it, then you know the logistics of how to make it happen. So it's not as difficult to do it again. And then I guess in that way, there's not as much. What's that term when you buy a thing and then you feel like you have to buyer's go remorse? It? No, no, it's it's um, sunk cost. Sunk, sunk cost. cost. Yeah. 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 So there maybe is not as much sunk cost feeling about it. They're like, ah, eh, we don't need to do this, so let's not do it. They can certainly get attention. I, I think it's interesting what you said, Andy, and Mark kind of says this as well that and maybe this is a test for apple what if we release early versions to marquez brownlee and and i justine and and uh and let them do big splashy reveals on their channel will we get enough as much attention will we get enough, as much and maybe it's a test you know the times change and uh it might be that those marquee names can bring a lot of attention that you don't have to bring people out yeah I have to I have to say that if you look at the track of who gets pre-release hardware, it used to be okay. Well, USA Today is definitely going to get it. Yeah, uh, Walt at the Walt yeah. is going to get it. New York Times going to get it. Yeah. And now it really is like which really really popular YouTubes or YouTuber YouTubers are going to get it, and then which other and maybe Joanna Stern at the it. Journal. And uh, yeah, yeah. No, which which is which, which and it, I, I want to make sure I don't. Uh, it's not no, but they're focused on video. No, 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 but right. they're focused exactly. on people video. who are doing right. video. Mm -hmm. And they're I video think producers that they yeah. may say to themselves, yeah, especially for these pro devices, that's who we want to give these to, yeah. uh, and let them do a splashy rollout all at the same time for it. I I yeah. think that's kind of intriguing. By the way, I also appreciate Mark putting in. For completely random reasons, a picture of Eddie Q on the floor at the Warriors <laughs> Chase Arena yelling at Steph Curry. And Warriors. by the way, speaking of courage, Eddie's wearing flip flops. Now, wearing flip flops courtside Ugh. is a very courageous wow, that is a thing statement. to do. Yeah. You got to be a brave man to bare your toes in front of Steph Curry and a bunch of other eight foot tall people. <laughs> That's right. I sat and courtside I, and I hope, once 20 years ago yeah. and. They're bigger than you realize when you're right there. Uh, they're huge and bare feet. I don't know. Yeah, God, 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 love them. <laughs> <laughs> as my, as my, as my mom would say, or anybody at her parish would say, God, God, God love, love him. him. God bless, him. bless his heart. Actually, bless Eddie has a big victory to talk about. I've been noticing a lot of ads yeah. for the Super Bowl halftime show featuring Taylor Swift, brought to you by Apple. <laughs> Apple Music. Usually Apple Music, it's yeah. Pepsi. Usually it's a, I mean, these are, that's a marquee position for a brand. Apple Music, not just Apple, but Apple Music. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they so they basically gave the NFL the same talk that Steve Jobs gave to Scully saying, do you want to, do you want to sell sugar water to, to little kids or do you want to help change the world? Yeah. Rihanna is also headlining. So maybe, I was going to say, all that matters to me is that Apple Music was able to get Rihanna to perform yeah, at the yeah. Super Bowl. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. That I mean, if Eddie Q needed to bear his toes to make that happen, fantastic. Yeah. Do you think that was the, that was the stipulation? <laughs> I, I don't want to speculate. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, a, it's surprising. That, it's surprising. This, this is the first time that like a a, a, a music streamer uh, is the first time to put on this show because they can. The, the reason why like Pepsi and these other really big brands is because they already had marketing agreements going on with Prince with right. all these like huge huge uh, marquee groups. But Apple Music, they can bring in the absolute top of the list people. You're, you're not going to have a Vegas stage magician doing the halftime show, which is <laughs> what used to happen in the early '80s. And you should definitely look up early '80s and. NFL halftime show if you wanted to see the epitome of okay well clearly nobody's watching TV during the halftime show it doesn't matter what we put on there uh, so this yeah that could why be why did super, I think Taylor Swift I saw swear to God I saw her in the ad but I don't see her name on here it's Rihanna I it's think not she has something to do with Apple Music something oh maybe this like I love Apple Music so much and now I'm yeah. glad to see they're doing a host halftime show on Fox featuring not me 
I don't know. I saw her in the ad. Maybe I wasn't paying close I, attention. I will tell you, you're not alone. I did see something about Taylor Swift and and Apple Music and stuff too. So well, we'll that see. came from somewhere. It's not just, you didn't make it up, I promise. Oliver Schusser, who is Apple's vice president of Apple Music and Beats, says, Rihanna is an incredible recording artist who's a favorite for many millions of Apple Music customers around the world. We're excited to partner with Rihanna Rock Nation and the NFL... To bring music and sports fans a momentous show, what an incredible artist for the inaugural, well, that's interesting, Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show. The inaugural, first in many. Also, Over the coming months, expect to see exclusive deals and sneak peeks leading up to the Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show by following Apple Music on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Yeah, and, there, and Apple is also one of the one of the groups that is actively, actively uh, uh, fighting to get NFL shows for their streaming platform. Yeah, maybe this is maybe this was one of the sweeteners to to the deal, saying, "By the way, that's we you, will be able to give you Super Bowl halftime shows like you wouldn't believe." That's how you get in the room. We will, where it we will and we yeah. we will be the underwriting sponsor for the next X years, yeah. even, no matter yeah. how this deal goes. Yeah. Maybe they're relegating somebody in the chat room says, uh, "Maybe they're relegating Taylor to the." You know, the uh, pregame tailgate party. <laughs> that could be. That would, that would be. She's done, she's done a halftime show, I'm sure, before. I'm pretty sure I remember her. Uh, anyway, Rihanna. So that's a big deal. You're telling me, young person? Yeah, Mike Rihanna. Cassandra? Yes. So Rihanna has not released a new album in a long, long time. And because she's been so focused on both her uh, cosmetics line and her uh fashion line she has not done a lot of music stuff in a long time so this is actually a huge deal that she's going to be performing live for the first time in forever here is her tweet that kind of broke the news oh, cool uh for the folks who are listening yep. it is a football <laughs> in the hand of a person who it has some um significant some, henna to some sort of tattoo yeah henna, yes. henna tattoo <laughs> I, I suppose that's Rihanna's. It's got to be Rihanna's hand. I mean, I must be recognizable as as Rihanna's hand. Yeah. Uh, it got two hundred eighty three thousand retweets, one hundred nineteen quote tweets, and one point eight million likes. So obviously, people looked at that and went, "Oh, Rihanna's going to be at the halftime show." And anybody anybody who wants to throw shade at Taylor Swift, the, you're you're oh, come no, on, you're not looking, me. You're looking forward you're looking forward to her October her October album as much as pretty much everybody yeah, else. Not me, <laughs> not me. I wouldn't in a million years. Uh, so all right, yeah, I'm I'm just going to be remain puzzled uh, by that. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I'm just looking at Bloomberg uh, Mark's Bloomberg uh, newsletter because there was a lot of juice in this newsletter. In other in another news. He says the buy now, pay later feature that Apple announced yeah. at WWDC is mysteriously delayed. What's the story there, Morning Glory? So this is, so for folks who may not remember, Apple did announce that they would be doing the thing that a lot of different uh, fintech companies are doing, where you are able to uh, go online and when you find an item that is uh, costly, say, you know, three hundred dollars. We'll just go with that. Um, the different fintech companies will help you split that up into a certain number of payments, and depending on who you use for that, uh, they may charge you some interest on those payments. Uh, so it, it basically evens out to a loan that you're paying over time, or uh, many of them do interest-free loans where you just split up the payments into a certain number of of actual payments paid out. Um, Apple said that they would be doing this with Apple Pay itself. So you could uh, go and anywhere where you would do an Apple Pay payment, it's unclear sort of the, the limits because some services will do even payments as small as like 40 bucks, uh, or rather full purchases as small as 40 bucks. Uh, in this case, you go through, you make an Apple Pay payment, and then instead of paying for it all right there up front, Apple would give you an option to pay out in four equal installments with 0% uh, APR. Uh, so basically you would not be uh, paying extra for it, just the, the cost itself. And now it seems like uh, while that was meant to release with uh, iOS 16, it is, and there is a setting that's available in your phone already to turn on that allow payments option. It is not there, and apparently, uh, Apple is still working to make it possible. So, coming in a future update, they say may not be available in all states. I wonder if they're legal issues, or maybe they're sensitive to the fact that, especially in an economic downturn, BNPL can 
be a bad thing for some people. Yeah. yeah. An excuse another, to buy stuff they another, can't afford. Uh, well, uh, another thing could be that they're part of what what's going to make this work for them is the ability to basically, oh, you're, you haven't made payments. Guess what? Your phone has been deactivated until you resume your payments. Kind of like what kind of what was really chintzy. Uh, 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 we finance anybody uh, car loan companies right. do, where they put a tracker then a, and a disruptor on the car that says, "Oh, by the way, we've disrupted you. You're, you're two days late. We're going to give you charge you a five hundred dollar extra fee, and you're stranded in the middle of nowhere." So that's we. Yeah, you know, it's it's a weird thing. It's, it'd be interesting if it would be more interesting if they made that a a benefit of. Uh, Actually, maybe they, is that is that that's not a benefit of uh, of having the Apple bank for something on the Apple card, is it? Uh, no, I, this is a separate. Yeah, the, this is okay. as part of Apple Pay. So yeah, you could yeah. you could not have an Apple card and still be able to do these. Payments, you would still but, have to yeah. qualify. So yeah, yeah, they right. yes, the qualification is separate. So basically, yeah. even if you didn't qualify for the full on Apple card, it is possible that you could qualify for one of these. But then again, that's where we're looking at that sort of moral issue of. They couldn't qualify right. for the card. Should we, you know, couldn't qualify the card? Path. You don't, you don't, you don't have, uh, you don't have eight hundred dollars to spend on a new phone. Yeah, that's uh, and I mean, and I don't, I don't want to be make this sound condescending at all because I mean, there, there are people, there are a lot of reasons why people don't ha don't carry a credit card. Uh, there are people who can absolutely uh, afford a brand new iPhone. But you're right, everybody, every, everybody who's talking about this and thinking about this that. The first time that Apple gets associated with payday car loans, that's not a good look for Apple. That's the, that's the same reason why I was wondering why they really wanted to be to get into banking, why they really wanted to get into having their own credit card. It's like the first time that someone they prove someone that got in over their head that, and objectively, another commentator would say, "Yeah, there's a reason." There, someone, almost any, almost anybody else who they would have applied to, they would have given them a lower credit limit, limit, or basically made it harder for them to get themselves in three thousand dollars worth of debt that they can't pay back. That's that when that starts happening, that's a bad bad look for Apple. German says, "I'm hearing." That's that's versus I'm thinking. I'm hearing there have been fairly significant technical and engineering challenges in rolling out the service, and that's leading to hmm. the delays. So I don't know. We'll see. So apparently there's it's not on the sort of uh, should we do the side yeah. one that we can't make this happen for some reason. We already yeah. talked about it. Should we do it? We just can't do it. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're worried about what happens to our tires when we run over people like that over and over and over again. <laughs> there might should be a we, technological should issue. Should we have metal? Should, should the boot on their necks, should it be more of a pressure thing or should it be more of a spikes on it that are inflicting the pain? We just don't know yet. Uh, a lot of debate. A lot of block it back and forth. No bad idea. This here. just in, according oh. to TMZ and People, Taylor Swift was offered the 2023 Super Bowl halftime show, but turned it down. Ah. So Rihanna was a second choice. Oh, that breaks <laughs> my heart. Or a third. Yeah. We don't know. There could have been others, but uh, she was at least a second or, choice. Okay, here's what here's what really happened. And by the way, when I say <laughs> what really happened, what I'm saying is this is what happened in my mind. In my head. Because this makes yes. me happier. Yes. In my Fan head, this is, is what really here. happened. Yes. Rihanna was asked first uh -huh. and her people were like because of course they didn't get to talk to rihanna face to face the, her people were like uh <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll run it up the chain we'll you know we'll see maybe maybe and while they were doing that they're like oh man we got to find somebody else and of course taylor swift is a great second choice because beyonce was not going to do it again she's too busy so they went <laughs> to taylor swift next if you can't and, get the queen get the princess yes and then taylor swift was like, uh, no, because I'm still kind of weird about streaming music services and how you devalue my music. And uh, yeah, I, like you pay people more, Apple, but still not so great about that. And also I've got a tour to do. And while she was in the middle of saying no with this long reason why, because of course she wrote out like a letter, that's whenever Rihanna's people came back and said, actually, Rihanna's uh, ready to do this as long as uh, we can talk a lot about her cosmetics that she sells in her fashion. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Regulators are, according to... Uh, to Pew earlier in the year, scrutinizing BNPL by now, pay later. So maybe I think that's good. Yeah, as they should. Yeah, yeah. you're seeing it everywhere. You're I've got it, a you're family member on... who um, go ahead, go ahead, uh, Mike, got sorry. into. Sorry, I was just real quick anecdote. No, no, I no, have no. a family member who a younger family member and didn't quite grasp the uh, seriousness of the situation. I didn't know that they had this because I knew about buy now pay later, but I didn't know it went as far as essentially 
an app that is a payday loan service. Ooh, like they had to easy. set up. Yeah. yeah. And so they ended up getting, you know, some of their paychecks completely taken away because they had signed up for this thing. And I was so I was very upset, not at them, but at the fact that this even existed, that there are apparently payday loan uh, apps, essentially, that are out there. That's ridiculous. Go ahead, Andy. No, no I, I, I'm 100% with you. What gets me mad is that now there's sort of, uh, the thing is, like, a lot of these shifty finance, financial operators, they look shifty. Like, you drive, you realize that when you're shopping for a new car, you wonder why one is uh, in what used to be uh, a McDonald's that went out of business in 1978, and one is a big building with a big lot and big and a waiting room and stuff like that, and maybe the payday loan, the payday loan operator looks a little bit shifty. It's when, like, you're checking out on, just making a purchase on eBay, and it's offering to split a payment into, like, X portion. It's like, oh, wow, that's a really great feature, eBay. Thank you. If, you know, I was going to spend $400 for this thing that I needed, but yeah, it would be easier if I spent it in in, in, in different payments. And then, like, I, I've never, I'm, I'm not speaking uh, ill of, of whatever the service eBay is using. I've never used it myself. But the thing is, like, it feels like you you trust eBay, you trust Apple, you trust right. this operation, and, yeah. and and this and this and this feels like oh, if I just click this checkbox, I was worrying about how much I was going to have to like cut back in order to afford this in an all in one thing. Great, I'll do it this way without really appreciating that. Well, here are things that this they they're not actually offering this financial service themselves. They are basically taking a commission on another company that doesn't care that you can't make your rent this week because they decided that hey, well, you've been paying on time. Time, but you're a little bit you're you're not really getting ahead of much we have the ability to simply take all the money out of your account to cover every, the balance and the future interest so that's what we did good luck paying your paying your rent this month because we just took we, we just took 800 dollars out of your account right now that's the sort of stuff that people are going to get uh, get hooked by as well as micah's situation where you have little kids who don't, you know, they, they go, you have know, kids in school, they learn how to, they learn how to maybe survive an active shooter. They do not learn how like interest works. They don't learn how loans work. They don't learn how personal finance works. And that's a doubly a problem in our society. Yeah. I have one word for that. Shri Perumpa Badur. And uh, <laughs> Shri Perumpa Badur. Sri Perumpabadur is the factory on the outskirts of Chennai, India, where Apple is now manufacturing its oh. iPhone 14 for the first time ever. This is the beginning of Apple transferring out of China, uh, as we've been talking about for some time now, how urgent that is. It's just the 14. It's kind of driven by the fact that India uh, has additional tariffs for phones that are not manufactured in country. So I suspect it has something to do with that as well. Yeah. Foxconn will, though, is the manufacturer. So it will be making devices at its Sri Parampadur factory in the outskirts of China. Yeah. This, 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 is, this, is a big... this is going to eventually lead to them fully leaving China? Or is this I think just diversify. we have other options? They're, we know they're going to do Vietnam plants, right? Uh, Brazil yeah. plants. I think it's diversifying. Um, Got it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, this is this is significant because they they have been doing uh, Indian manufacturing before to, as you say, comply with tariffs. I think this is the first time that they've been doing. No, the brand new current phone that was just that's released what it is. this year yes, is right. being is yes. being done locally, and that's that's that is a scary thing if you are a Chinese manufacturer because once you start demonstrating that no manufacturing in Vietnam, manufacturing in India, manufacturing in Brazil is absolutely in the same level of quality and precision and reject rate as we've been doing and we've been doing it for 12 or 13 years on this line of phones, that becomes scary. When when Apple cra Apple and Foxconn, they crack the formula of, here's how to build a factory literally anywhere in the world and build things to Apple's Apple's demands and Apple's tolerances, Apple's labor rules, absolutely everything, then suddenly they're not quite looking at, as the superstars that are indispensable as they have been for the past 12 years, 13 years. And it's clear Apple knows how to take uh, manufacturing process and bring it up to its standard. I mean, ch you know, for a long time, stuff made in China was considered cheesy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not anymore. In well, fact, all of our iPhone 14 Pros, both the Pros and the Max, are still made exclusively in China. So, yeah. But to but to I mean, to China's credit, like the manufacturing for a, for a decade and a half was that was their 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 Apollo program. That was their moonshot. Yeah. They were they were investing in that part of of uh, of the economy's future, and they 
did and do take great pride in know where yes yes if you buy something a cheap knockoff uh, from aliexpress it probably was manufactured in china for next to nothing but we are also the same manufacturers that can do spacecraft components to the to uh, to the tolerances of any requirement whatsoever at a speed that has never right. been seen before south korea so, did the same thing in fact i think it was that was the model for the chinese yeah. government they looked at how south korea went from being the back of the drugstore crappy stuff to premier quality stuff and they said we sh we can do that yeah. too and they start and to be and also do they they started off by taking all of the every time that american companies for instance decided to shut down and move their manufacturing elsewhere guess who was buying all of their factories and buying all of their machinery and shipping it back home uh, it was again the the uh, the uh, the expanding uh, chinese manufacturing sector they I mean this the they we sh again it's it's too bad that that is often that it's often uh, associated with cheap tacky knockoff stuff because they really are the creme de la creme in terms of we need something that's manufactured for uh, on a certain budget to an extreme tolerance to an amount of reliability and we need to be able to pivot very very quickly who can do that and the answer is almost always chinese fat manufacturing um we have talked uh, months ago about app tracking transparency uh, Facebook's whining about Apple turning that switch on. Uh, we'd also mentioned that Facebook has other ways around it, as does as do other companies. It's just one thing that Apple's turning off the uh, Apple ID for advertisers, IDFA. Uh, well, it turns out Facebook was, in fact, getting around it, uh, and they are now being sued. Security researcher uh, Felix Krauss found that Facebook was getting around Apple's system. Oh, this is so evil. By directing any link a user clicks in the app to a new in-app browser window Ugh. where Meta could inject code, alter the external websites, track user behavior online without your consent or awareness. As a result, Meta is facing two class action lawsuits um, uh, saying it violated both state and federal privacy laws, including <laughs> the Wiretap Act. The California Invasion of Privacy Act and the California Violation of the Unfair Competition Law. Meta has been injecting code into third-party websites. Uh, yeah, sounds like wiretapping to me. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. to, 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 to make sure it's completely understood, that doesn't mean that they've been uh, hijacking websites. It does, excuse me, it, the, the, it's not, it doesn't mean that when you launch the Safari browser, or at, if Facebook has injected code into you, all the websites that you're doing. It means that people who think that of tapping on a link inside a Facebook post would take them to the Safari browser outside of the app. They, have, they haven't left the app itself. They have actually entered an in-app browser that Facebook has complete control over. Uh, and that, yeah, this was discovered like a little while ago, and it's not surprising that this has turned into a class action suit. Surprising and disappointing that's not turning into something that the Justice Department isn't isn't uh, isn't trying to uh, get into because it really is it's it's it is the, de the definition of what the FTC doesn't need uh, congressional laws to uh, to handle. They are they are they have they are mandated to punish companies for deceptive behavior, and I don't think it's, it's either they can defend themselves that this is not deceptive behavior. Facebook claimed they lost ten billion dollars due to application uh, tracking. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I always thought it was a little disingenuous. If Facebook was 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 saying that, but meanwhile in the background, and I, you know, you, it's. Are you su even surprised that Facebook was doing this? <laughs> right. It's like, of course they were. Uh, what a shock, you know. Yeah. Um, I hope so, they get they, the book thrown at them. Oh, absolutely. But every and time they, they get the book thrown at them, it's never enough to actually no, make a difference. The no. book thrown at them is not enough money. They have never reformed their behavior. They apologize mm -hmm. and they keep doing it. They they are currently under at least two consent agreements uh, to settle huge huge problems going going back to Cambridge Analytica. The fact that the, the the fact that the Justice Department and the and the FTC and all these other regulators have not just simply said, guess what, you have now had your fourth strike and now guess what, you get to sell cookies, you get to be a cookie man, you get to sell actually but baked goods. You can see you why be, politically they can't. Company. They won't do that, and I think Facebook knows it. They, they know grandma would be upset, so they know, oh, come on, what are you going to do? You're going to fine us again? Okay, fine. Uh, they're they can, not going to shut, we can't, they can't shut them down. Uh, I they, mean, they can, I suppose, yeah, yeah, legally, right. but come on, <laughs> that would be political I, suicide. I, I think that if any company could be split apart, I think it definitely could be Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Google Google would be extremely difficult because 
they are really smart at tip at tiptoeing on just the side of the angels. You know, they could say, "Oh, we've been naughty little boys," and get and get off because they generally stay on the right side of the line. Facebook, though, I've never I've never had a conversation with people who currently work in Facebook at any level or have, have or formerly worked at Facebook at any level that made me think that they have proper respect for limitations to their powers. Whereas Google, I can I've. I, I've always had conversations that said, yeah, well, look, we're in the ad business. We have to collect data. Now our big challenge is to figure out how to do so without violating the, all these rules and all the spirits of all these rules. Because if we have, we can't, we can't build up, if we're going to reinvent a new system for collecting data, we can't do it in such a way that we have to tear it down in a, in a year and a half anyway. So we have to figure out how to, how to continue to survive in this area. Yeah. Facebook is, is just, look, there's data out there. If you try to hide it from us, it's like you're stealing from us and we resent that. And we're going to just gonna be twice <laughs> and as good aggressive. luck. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and also, I think it serves them to say, oh, it's Apple's fault that we're losing money when in fact yeah. it isn't Apple's fault they're losing money. They're doing right. everything they can not to lose money and they still are losing money yeah. for a variety of very, very good reasons. And, and and by the way, that is that is the truth they're saying because they did say it in investor calls. So that is that they, they admit are it. they're they admit so, it. right. Well, so they I mean they say they said that we're losing. Here's how we're losing an immense amount of money because of Apple's ad tracking. And if they say that to in all kinds of other situations, you could try to tear that apart as to how they're waffling or are they making this up or are they really secretly not finding a way to circumvent it without losing money. They actually said this in terms in which they are under under legal obligation to the SEC to yeah. make sure that they're not they're not saying anything. That's untrue to their investors. Good. One more way we can get. So, so yeah, but you're, you're glad you're glad that they're feeling some pain. You're not you're not glad that honest and decent people are my, are their jobs are in danger. But you're, no, in fact, I, we have lots but, of friends who work there, uh, and yeah. we love them dearly. Uh, doing their best. They're doing their best. Um, I don't blame anybody but Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Uh, it's a press release, but it's still a pretty cool press release. The iPad Pro is revolutionizing how archaeologists preserve the ancient history of Pompeii. LIDAR is being used much more heavily now in archaeology. In fact, some amazing results in the deepest, uh, most forested area of the Amazon. They're find, finding ancient ruins that are long buried using LIDAR to penetrate the ground. Here in, uh, in Pompeii, they're using LIDAR to uh, find... The problem is when you do these digs, you start to destroy the surroundings. So in, in, as an alternative to archaeological excavation, they're doing LiDAR scanning and using the iPad Pro as the kind of receiver. Um, it's really, it is, it's a handheld, yeah. you know, supercomputer. And so that's very, very cool. So a good, it's, it's a press release from Apple, but still. Documenting as much as possible, yeah. Yeah, still cool. Dr. Badillo knew the iPad Pro with Apple Pencil would serve as the foundation for their work. <laughs> uh, they're yeah. using Esri's suite of tools, ESRI's suite of tools, as well as, I think Esri is a, um, a mapping, uh, yeah, they're a GIS uh, company, ESRI. And they're also using uh, Concepts by Top Hatch. Let's see what Concepts is. Sketch? Oh, no, yeah, infinitely. Concepts is cool. It's like a whiteboard. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, I just met somebody. Uh, so I, uh, Matthew Casanelli and I uh, set up a uh, photo walk in San Francisco to test out the new iPhones. And so we oh, had, a, 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 this was just over the past weekend. So we had a bunch of people. Oh, uh, I wish I'd known about that. Oh, oh, you're not on Twitter. Twitter? What's that? <laughs> uh, if you were on you Twitter. Kids you kids today and your blue bubbles. <laughs> we went uh, not sure. Go I'm for sure it. To that, 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 that's what that's what I always blame my lack of a social life on. Oh darn darn <laughs> this darn Android. this It was on Sunday, so you would have been doing I couldn't uh, have done it to anyway. it anyway. Yeah. 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 But it was um, oh, fun. there were I will say there was uh someone who actually works on the camera app at Apple who was there with us. So oh, that was kind of fun. Oh, nice. How cool. Yeah. They, and I, apparently I said, no um, boomers were allowed. So <laughs> no, okay. there were, there were. There oh, was right. um okay. there was a guy right. He's the dean of a school where he teaches Latin to fourth graders. Wow. Latin. I was like, oh, my God, I get to nerd out with you about Latin today as we go around and take photos. It was you Latin. and I, they they wouldn't let us learn it until seventh grade. So, you know. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that wild? Fourth grade. to wait. It's still the case. What's the awesome Gallia, is that they're still est, using. Yes, yes. <laughs> they're still using the Cambridge course that hic, I learned. Hic, hoc. Uh, out of. So Weus, that was Weus, Weus. Do you still remember the uh, declinations of hic, hic, hoc? 
Oh golly, no, <laughs> no. I was drilled. They're drilled into my brain. I can't. I can't. And I remember Andy the Christmas remembers carols. Remember Caesar's uh, Chronicles. So, so there you go. The Christmas yeah. carols. Yeah, let's hear a Latin Christmas us, carol. Uh, so there's tiniun, tiniun, tin tin nabula, nuad et delectatnos, wigahita trahea. Hey. <laughs> Jingle bells in Latin, ladies and gentlemen. You just heard it here first. I don't think there's another podcast in America. Where, <laughs> Probably not. Where you would hear jingle bells in Latin, especially in September. Uh, anyway, so the iPad is the perfect archaeology machine, says Dr. Emerson. Yeah. For digging up Latin uh, Christmas yeah. carols. That's, that's how have you ever been circle. to Pompeii? Uh, you know, we were supposed to go and, and, and they told us you won't have time to get there. Traffic's terrible, so we didn't. But I really want oh, to go Oh, really? Yeah. I really would like to really see Pompeii, see Pompeii for Pompeii. sure. It's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, they're, still, they're still digging out uh, the city that was buried by the uh, yeah. Vesuvian eruption back in, what was it? I don't know. 50, oh, that was uh, a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, yep. Uh, the, uh, there's a, they use the LiDAR scanner and iPad Pro in combination with 3D scanner app to create three-dimensional maps of trenches. Oh, it's not that kind of LiDAR. It's not ground-penetrating LiDAR. No, no, right. They're, They're using the, the LiDAR device. on the right. iPad. <gasps> yeah. Wow. See, that's, that's what I love about when they put hardware like that just as a commodity, just in every single device. It's nice when Apple says, hey, look, we created this this software feature that's supported by iPhoto for uh, for for for, uh, uh, for depth effects, for refocusing. But when they open that stuff up to third party developers, say, by the way, we have LiDAR if you want. If you can think of any ways to use it, here are the APIs for it. You find people you find developers finding incredible uses for this stuff. And that's adds so much value to the device when you find that app. I completely, now I am impressed. Now I am impressed. Yeah, it's not the, yeah. so that's what they're doing in the Amazon is ground penetrating LiDAR. This is actually right. uh, using the LiDAR to scan the digs using, and this is the app they use, 3D, it's great, a free app from Lawn Labs, 3D scanner but, yeah. app, LiDAR scanner yeah. 3D. That's amazing. That's, I, I love I, just I love, when people take this technology and they run with it yeah. and they are doing it in such a way that you hear about these new apps that maybe you didn't even hear of. I mean, I do a show every week where we're talking about apps all the time and sometimes these come up and it's just like the brilliance of people making use of the tools they have on hand or maybe they're a little bit aspirational, the tools that they want to have on hand, they get them and they just run with it. And oh, it's so inspiring. Yeah, yeah. And also, and also I, I, I'm really, really fascinated by this idea that we're kind of at that transition point of like where photography might have been like in 1840, 1850, where we know this technology exists. We don't know how well it's going to be used in the future. But the thing is, like uh, they're there with uh, uh, radiance fields, nerf fields and the ability to say, look, I have I have no idea what could be gained by using the LiDAR scanner on my phone to create this really coarse 3D map of what this place looked like. But maybe it means that in 20, 30, 40 years time, I could simply drag this file onto an app or whatever is going to be an app in 20, 30 years and create a absolutely like 12K resolution, uh, 240, 300 frame per second uh, virtual reality reconstruction of this. Uh, I, I was thinking about that while watching the uh, uh, while watching the, the the Queen's funeral, thinking that this is not being broadcast. There, there's not going to be a VR app or an augmented reality app that will place you here. It, it, they're not broadcasting it that way. But it made me wonder if somewhere in the planning over the past like two or three years, they didn't think here's where we could put a couple of very discreet lidars, so that if in the future historians wanted to reconstruct this or reframe this or reshoot this they would have the benefit of this data it's like it like we'll put this data into a time capsule where this newspaper looks like it's useless to us today or this uh, this purse that that, that we've recovered uh, from th that was lost 50 years ago it's just a, a purse that's just filled with common stuff that people used to carry 50 60 years ago if it were recovered a month later it would just be worthless except for the cash in the pocket uh, in the in the purse but 50 or 60 years ago to see no here is what a teenager at this high school would have been carrying each and every day then expand that to 100 years from now 200 years from now so that's why it got me really really interested to think about if if i were one of the nerds in charge of that funeral i'd be thinking what could we put in or while as part of the preparations for after the casket has been draped everything's been put on it let's do as good a 3d scan of it as we can so that 
just as people are going to be reviewing this HD footage, just as people are going to be reviewing the photos, if they want to review a 3D examination of this, they could do that too. That's I, I, This is the sort of thing that gets my gears going, and LiDAR on every single phone and iPad is definitely powers part of that engine. So now, by the way, the press release is actually a great article. They have, they've hiring, they've been hiring so many good yeah. journalists. It doesn't have a byline, I don't think, but whoever wrote it obviously has ex experience writing feature articles. Uh, for magazines and newspapers. But now that I've read it, and uh, instead of just looking at the pictures, because <laughs> the pictures are great, <laughs> the, what they've been doing is scanning as they dig so that they can reconstruct yeah. the excavation from beginning to end. And then when they find things, they scan them. They have a picture of a coin. You know, uh, Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, but some of the things they're finding uh, might predate that from, there was an earlier earthquake and so forth. And so there's a coin uh, that they they scan, and th so these will be available eventually online. Uh, this is the the gold coin. It's an aureus that they found uh, during, wow. and and so they they actually have now been able to scan that. That's from uh, f uh, the year thirteen or fourteen, uh, and so eventually they're going to pre uh, present this uh, at an archaeological conference. But I would hope that at some point they'll put it online as well, and I think that must be kind of a goal at some point um because you've got 3d scans of, of this whole excavation is very cool they're going to present at the annual archaeological institute of america uh, conference in january uh, yeah. there's an entire database reflecting the uh, the excavation yeah and just, just think about just think about what they're doing, what like uh, the Smithsonian is doing, other other institutions, just basically as part of their acquisition process to not only catalog it, not only photograph it, but also produce really good 3D scans of it. So that at the, there's so many exhibits of the Smithsonian where if you want your own copy of this urn that was retrieved uh, 50 years ago from a, a dig site that was uh, was, was overwhelmed 5,000 years ago, download it, 3D print it, and now you have your own copy of it. You can hold it in your hand just as people used to hold in their hands three three thousand years ago it's I, I never get bored with this stuff ios 16.1 is on its way beta 3 has gone out to developers um ipad pro models from 2018 and newer will now be able to take advantage of stage manager uh you won't be able to do the external display Apple's removing external supply, display support for Stage Manager on M1 iPads. Maybe that's some of the problems, the external display, one of the reasons that mm -hmm. Stage Manager is slow to come out. Um, Apple's making Stage Manager work with a number of older devices for the first time. The 11-inch iPad Pro, the 12.9-inch iPad Pro, third generation and later. Uh, as long as you have an A12X or A12Z chip, uh, as, as well as the M1, you'll be able to use this. So maybe we're making some progress to getting Stage Manager out. Apple has kind of promised it will come out with iPad OS next month, we think. We don't know. Yeah, that's that's the hope. I mean, yep. I think now we just have to see if uh, they can iron out all of the little bugs. And this seems to be, of all of the things, uh, Stage Manager in particular seems to be one feature where Apple is doing a bit more of a dance with the folks who are using these betas and saying things about them. Um, the changes that I keep hearing uh, that, are, that are, you know, making their way into the iPad after the beta are a lot of the same feedback that I've seen whenever everybody tries out a new beta. So they seem to be listening pretty clearly on this uh, and, you know, really sort of trying to get this right and make sure that yeah. it's ready and available for people, especially because there have been some um, issues with the uh, with iOS uh, in in the first rollout. We've got that 16.0.1, but then we just recently got 16.0.2, and there were all of these issues, including one that Lisa experienced. What was that? Um, her it was uh, when she did the restore. Her phone wouldn't start. And oh yeah yeah yeah. We should mention that one more time. <laughs> um, actually, I don't know if we mentioned it last week. So. Lisa, did we mention this last week, or did we talk about it? We talked, we about, talked it the tech about it. Guy. Yeah, That's we why. talked it on the tech guy. Yep. That's why I feel like I've talked about this. So there are three, at least, ways to migrate from an old iPhone to a new iPhone. You and I, Micah, did the kind of the easy and obvious thing, which was uh, put the two of them side by side, uh, which then paired the SIM, moved the SIM over, and then mm -hmm. it gives you the choice to restore from iCloud or copy while they're sitting side by side. And you and I 
reasonably, I think, decided to use the iCloud backup. Lisa did what John Gruber recommended last year, which was use the the phone to phone backup. I always mm -hmm. thought that's got to be slower. You have to be on the same Wi Fi network, but you know, it worked actually really fast for her. She did it. She went to bed uh, Saturday night, I think it was, or Friday night. She got the phone on Friday, so yeah, Friday or Saturday night. Uh, with the process begun, woke up to a dead iPhone 14 Pro Max. Like Oof. nothing, no on-off switch, nothing, blank screen. Actually, she woke up to it at 3 in the morning and <laughs> said, hey. I said, hey, what's wrong? <laughs> and I said, I don't know, can we do it in the morning? No. It's, <laughs> she, was, she told me later she never went back to sleep. She was like so upset that her new brand new phone was dead. But to her credit, before the tech guy woke up the next morning, she went online and found a YouTube video that said, oh, yeah, just do the full reset and it'll come back to life. So that's the volume up, volume down, and then press and hold the screen on off key till you see the Apple. And it came back to life. Everything was fine. So this is apparently a known bug with the phone to phone upgrade. Yes. And there's also another one where um, folks who are charging their, specifically with the pro models, when folks are charging their pro models, it will get between 90 and 95% charged. A lot of times it seems to be at 93% in particular, and then the phone will just hard reset. And the Apple support, this is what I was talking about earlier. Apple support has said a whole number of things, including some that make sense, like uh, restoring the phone from DFU mode will help. Restoring the, mo the phone from restore mode will help. But some, uh, there was one uh, support person who said, delete the Eufy app on your phone. Eufy? And, <laughs> right? What? I don't get it. And then the, the, the other one was, and what ended up working for this person. Oh, the Eufy app did not fix it? No. That it was just not. random? That Jeez was, they, they thought that that could be causing the problem for wow. some reason. I don't know the context of it, unfortunately, but I thought I can't be. On page 35 of your binder, you'll find an, right. a footnote. <laughs> <laughs> says, perhaps. Uh, so what ended up working for the person, excuse me, was um, turning off background app refresh uh. on all of their apps. Uh. And that's just not something that should be, like, you should not need to do that for it to work. So... This is uh, something that I think Apple will end up addressing in the next uh, iteration as well. As we continue to see these little things, the 16.0.2 update fixed the optical image stabilization rattle that some people were experiencing yeah, on their TikTok pros. TikTok and Snapchat, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. So um, this is a harder one to fix because uh, you could fix it from, from now if you figure out what's going on by putting newer uh, uh, operating system or a fixed operating system on the phone. But all those phones that are in the stores that have been shipped out, this is, this is, they all, you can't fix the bug, you know, retroactively. Right. Uh, Lisa uh, found uh, a YouTube video. So we'll give credit to that. Um, YouTube, I how to fix frozen black screen after data transfer by web pro education. And uh, this two minute video walked her through it and it worked for her. And Emmerich in our chat room, uh, told me a couple of days ago, kiss Lisa for me. Now, now I know why he said it because it it was he had the same problem and it and it fixed it. Yes, uh, for her. So not good, but at least you know if you're doing a day, uh, transferring a phone to phone transfer uh, and it goes black, that's how you do it. You do a reset. I would have I would have probably tried that uh, had I been awake. You, yeah, you and I definitely would have. I th actually I right. thought when I got up I said, "Oh, we might have to do a DFU, which is one step even further down the road." But no, the reset yeah. the reset worked fine. So this is what it looks like when you have the transfer complete on your old phone and nothing <laughs> on your on your new phone. And I think it's only iPhone Pros. Uh, 14 pros right yes yeah. I, in fact all of these issues uh, any of the ones that have been reported so far have all been pro models and i huh. don't know if that's just I, this is this is the problem it could be a selection error i think is the proper term here because people with pros are more likely to be people who have like twitter accounts and so they're talking more about it yeah. and, and getting picked up by that you know what i mean more so attention. it could be that the non-pros are having it uh and right. we just don't know it but as far as that goes that seems to be the case rosemary uh had an interesting uh, issue with her her airpods Pro second generation, the first one she got, um, you know, normally that when you get a new Apple device or any device that has a rechargeable battery, they typically come around 50 to 60% charged because that's how you're meant to right. store those batteries. So she got her AirPods Pro, she opened them and they didn't do anything. And so she thought, oh, this must just be one of those rare times where the battery didn't come charged. She plugged it in for an hour and a half and came back and it still wasn't doing anything, wasn't lighting up, nothing. Uh. Uh, 
and tried a whole bunch of different things. Of course, there's not a whole lot of uh, interaction you can do with the earbuds pro. So she ended up having to take them in. They had a, the battery was just bad. And so she had to get a new pair, but there were plenty in stock. So she was able to get one, oh. but I, I think it's worth saying to folks who are listening. Um, I remember Renee Ritchie telling me this, um, especially with new device launches, if you're having any issues, always feel free or always feel encouraged even to reach out to Apple. And if you have Apple stores nearby, go in to do that because they are trying to capture all sorts yeah. of devices that do have errors and issues so that they can you know, iron that out in the manufacturing and, and ongoing process. Uh, so it's well worth you know, making sure your phone is exactly how you want it uh, because they want to make that the case too and also find those devices that are misbehaving and see if it's a, you know, a trend. Yeah. And it's not, it's not just if devices are misbehaving. Even if you drop it and you break the screen, you never there there's sometimes our hunting uh, hunting list that they're basically saying look if so if they come in we we want two examples of phones with broken screens since we want to know how well these things are, are are stepping up so yes you absolutely dropped it on your own yes you screwed up no it's not covered by warranty but they might just give you a new one because again cupertino engineers are saying please please capture as many of these devices as possible with the following uh, specific problems because we definitely want to take a look at how well people are, are using these things uh, Apple TV news, uh, Apple and Oprah are going their separate ways. The last Oprah project was the Sidney Poitier documentary, which just appeared on uh, Apple TV. It was a multi-year deal signed in 2018, but the contract is run. And, uh, I guess, uh, they're, they're, they're parting ways, you know, but they still have mutual respect for one another. And I think this is a big story. Uh, Vince Gilligan, of course, the creator of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, has mo is moving from AMC to Apple TV+. Plus. They have landed his new TV project, two-season order, and it stars Rhea Seahorn, who is yeah. absolutely wonderful in Better Call Saul. Uh, so I'm really glad to see. Uh, it's not going to be a, a Breaking Bad universe uh, show. In fact, it's not even expected to be uh, involved the underworld of drugs and crime at all. <laughs> so I don't know. Is it a sitcom? It's a. I don't know what this means. A grounded genre drama. Gr yeah. Wow. Well, it, grounded. A drama, try to any, say that five times fast. Yeah. yeah. But any any drama coming up, Vince Gilligan plus Rhea Seahorn. Perfect. As so, that's like she for anybody who didn't watch Better Call Saul. I think she is the 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 way that she performed the role that was written for her is the reason why Better Call Saul was previewed with people thinking, oh, so the wacky out there outlandish uh, is going to be sort of like a comedy drama where you see the hijinks, which turned it into, I think, the relationship that they wrote between Rhea, Se Rhea Seahorn uh, and uh, and Bob Odenkirk Kirk is what turned it into something as good, as, as impactful as Breaking Bad, if not more so. So, yeah, that's super, super exciting. It's like if I, 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 I have no I have no skin in this game because I do have the package. I have got Apple TV Plus anyway, but this is the sort of thing that that would have gotten me to say maybe I should sample Apple TV Plus because I don't want to not see that thing. Oh, Severance is so good. I know you love Ted Lasso. Yeah. Um, did you see, did you see the good stuff? Yeah. Did you see the the latest? <laughs> Ted Lasso is now going to be a playable character in FIFA oh, yeah. 2023, as well as well as the, as well as Richmond is going to be a playable club with all of the characters as players. The there's fictional a, club Richmond. Uh, which is from the Ted Lasso uh, game, uh, and he is a player or a coach. He is no, it's a it's a it's a team. It's it's a team that's playable in FIFA 2023. So yes, he is the coach of the team. They got oh, capture great. of Sudeikis. They also got capture of like the actual actor. They got Roy. Playing. Do they have Roy? Yep, yep. yep. The, yeah. At the, at the oh, end yeah. of this clip, at the end of this clip, they have Roy some can, gameplay Roy footage. Uh, He's bleeping everyone. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me get some He's footage from the from the game. Oh yeah, there's a there is a. Ted, Ted Lasso, and there's Roy. Yep. Oh wow, the whole team. Oh, you know what? That I will buy uh, yeah. that game just because of that. That's I hope, awesome. I hope I, <laughs> I, I, also because now I'm I'm happy because I know that somewhere there's motion caption of Jason Sudeikis doing like cabbage patching because we have we haven't seen him like on the, we haven't seen him on in Ted Lasso doing that except for like quote archival video footage of when his college team won but you know that that's one of his celebration moves as coach in this game that's that, got to be that it. is a brilliant promotional move on the part of uh, FIFA soccer <laughs> is that Electronic Arts probably yeah what a what a 
great great move <laughs> wow i hope they're a wonderful team <laughs> it's got the whole it's got everybody it's got all the coaches yeah. it's great it's yep. so good even the side like they, they even got coach it. coach 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 uh anything else going on that we want to talk about i'm looking at the things you guys uh, added um, I think we've covered uh, everything that was in our rundown for the day, which means if you will prepare yourselves, our picks of the week are imminent. Before we do, I want to put in a plug. You may have noticed, you know, because you're, you're that way, uh, <laughs> that there was only one ad on this show, uh, and that was a house ad. So you may have thought, boy, I wonder what's going on. Well, as you may have also noticed, times are tough all over the world, and... Uh, that means podcasting is getting a little tight as well. A lot of our advertisers are pulling back on their budgets and so forth. It means we need to rely more and more on our club. Thank goodness Club Twit exists. It is very easy for you to afford. Less than seven bucks a month. What do you get? Ad-free versions of every show. You wouldn't even hear this in the ad-free versions of the show. You also get, uh, of course, access to the Twit Plus Discord which is my, frankly, favorite new social network. Not only chatting about the shows, uh, but also uh, chatting about every other thing that geeks are interested in all around and full of animated GIFs for your enjoyment. <laughs> uh, and we do events in the club, too. Stacy's Book Club is in the club. The Ultimate, uh, I'm sorry, the Untitled Linux Show, which is the Ultimate Linux Show. So the club is a great way to uh, participate in shows we're preparing for the future that's how this week in space was born shows that are exclusive to the club like micah your so hands on mac which is fantastic we do put occasional uh, versions of that out uh, for the uh, for free just so people get a taste of it same with uh, paul Therott's hands on windows uh the untitled linux show stacy higginbotham's book club dick D. bartolo's giz fizz uh, all of them club only. They appear on the Twit Plus feed along with extra content that doesn't uh, make it into the podcast. So I think we've made a bundle of very, I think, useful uh, content for you for just seven bucks a month. You can subscribe to any individual show ad free, just one show for two ninety nine. But all of that's explained at the website twit.tv slash club twit. We really, uh, I think, want to put a push on over the next few months to get everybody who listens to the shows to uh, join Club Twit. Um, if you can, I know seven bucks a month for some people, it's a, it's a, it's a stretch, but if you can, it's going to make a big difference for us, uh, as we head into a, um, recession and a difficult, I think a difficult 2023, uh, makes it, makes a big difference to have that steady income. So twit.tv slash club twit. I really thank you and appreciate it to all our club twit members. Thank you. Uh, even though you're not hearing this cause you're a member of club twit. All right. Now. Time for the pick of the week. Andy Anaka, why don't you kick the pick off? Mine is a really cool site archive that uh, people, people should have on their radar. Just this month, the Steve Jobs family uh, introduced the Steve Jobs archive at stevejobsarchive.com. And it's des designated to be combination a central point for uh, humanitarian and social efforts that are going to be undertaken uh, under their their uh, uh, under their uh, to their trust and foundation, but also a place where they're going to be posting uh, archival files, emails, documents that related to Steve Jobs' life and history. And they started off with a bunch of uh, of stuff. At the very very top of the list is an email that he sent to himself as a reminder of basically what life is all about. And if this is what's if this is what we're going to be seeing from this site. It, you need to subscribe to the RSS feed. You need to bookmark it because it looks like the start of what's going to be a very, very interesting ongoing uh, ongoing site. I've, I've always said that uh, Steve supposedly was very anti-history, at least at Apple, where he wasn't all about, hey, let's have a let's let's have a museum. Hey, let's have a, uh, let, let's uh, let's honor what have we been doing in the past. Let's document and release stuff. Uh, and that's too bad because Apple has been a big, big part of a whole bunch of different aspects of, of of cultural and technological history. It needs to be documented so that it can illuminate and inspire other people. So it makes me happy to see that some of his own personal archives and personal documents and comments and notes to himself are, in fact, going to be made public where they can illuminate, instruct and uh, and uh, uplift other people. Very nice. SteveJobsArchive.com. Yeah, that was the occasion of Tim Cook, Johnny Ive, and Laureen Powell Jobs all appearing on the stage with Kara Swisher at the Dean yeah. Conference. 
uh, right. It was right after the Apple event, uh, and they yeah. announced this. So yeah, I think it's a really great thing to have, uh, yeah. and I hope more and more stuff appears there. Frankly, yeah, yeah, I think I think that video has actually recently been posted. At least it's recently turned up in my ah. subscriptions. So if you want to see the entire unedited uh, on stage, like an hour and a half long, that's also a pretty good watch. Nice. Micah Sargent, you don't usually get to do Picks of the Week with us. You do them all the time, of course, on iOS Today. Do you have something yeah. for us today? I do. Uh, so the app is pronounced Snapper, but it's spelled X-N-A-P-P-E-R. Snapper. Snapper. Uh, but they, they specify because I I used to pronounce it Snapper, and then they added this little subline to their uh, to the website that says "Read like Snapper." I'm like, okay, oh, fine. I get it now. So what but does it what, do? This is a this is an app for folks who take screenshots and like to post them places, which is something that I do rather frequently as I'm helping people uh, with questions they have, or I'm showing uh, that Zoom keeps serving up ads on my paid account, even though I should not be getting ads on my paid account. Anyway, that's a decide. And so I can take <laughs> screenshots and this lets you add sort of a pleasing background to them, but it also has these smart features where if you take a screenshot that's a little wonky, you can use the balance button and it figures out, oh, this is the content that you're trying to show. The rest of this is just background. It can then sort of uh, position it in the center and then make the, the background larger or smaller. You can redact text automatically. And what I love too is that it has all of the different social media image sizes built into it. So you can very quickly create uh, the perfect screenshot so that it posts at full uh, size on Twitter, or if you're posting to Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, etc. All of those are what are there as well. And it's got a built in watermarking feature. So it is I, I use a different tool for um, more basic screenshotting. But when I want to take a screenshot and then just post it in a way that looks good and will work on the specific site that I'm using, Snapper is the new one that I really like. And I would recommend this, um, of course, you know, maybe you just want this app on its own. You can get it for uh, $30 as a one-time purchase, but the real value I feel is by getting it as part of a set app subscription, uh, because when you do, then you get access to a bunch of other fantastic Mac apps that are available and there's, you know, dozens of them, but yeah, this is snapper and it just does a great job of, uh, making nice. screenshots that look good. Z I'm sorry. X N A P P E R. Z yes. Snapper. <laughs> snapper. Dot com. Snapper. <laughs> I have on the website actually it actually says underneath it X snapper uh, read like snapper read like yeah they're very snapper. clear yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to explain it's spelled twit but it's pronounced Chardet uh, <laughs> <laughs> bouquet <laughs> the president's <laughs> I, so as you know, speaking. I have a problem. Um, I will uh, wake up in the middle of the night and start scrolling through my Instagram feed and end up buying weird underwear. Mm -hmm. I stopped using Instagram because the ads were too good. Too good. Plus, I don't want to support Facebook. Well, along comes the OG app. Now, this is brand new, and I can't imagine they're going to be able to continue doing this for very long. <laughs> so you might want to download it right now. Uh, it's on... Uh, uh, the iOS uh, store as well as the Android Google Play store. It is Instagram without the ads, without uh, it's without the algorithm. It's just the people you follow. It's kind of Instagram. <laughs> it's OG, the old school Instagram, the Instagram, the original gangster. Let me show you if you have the over the shoulder shot. This is my Instagram feed on the OG app, and it looks just like my Instagram feed. It's even got the reels up at the top. Uh, I can like, I can comment. The one thing, as far as I can tell you, I can't do is post, and I, which means it's taking advantage of Instagram's web uh, API to download this. But just no ads alone for me makes Instagram suddenly this great thing. Of course, you're free riding completely on Facebook's service, uh, which means I think at some point Facebook's going to do something about this. But <laughs> until they do, hallelujah, it's mm -hmm. OG Instagram. Just search for the OG app 
in the app store. The the developers of the app seem uh, rather optimistic about things. When they were asked about it, they're like, oh, we don't see any changes coming to the Instagram API. This should be fine. Yeah, but, uh, we'll see. Yeah, I, I, I heard about this app this morning and downloaded it and uh, have been love using it. it as well. And it's like, oh, it's and I was so impressed that they were able to still get the reels showing and everything else. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm impressed with it. I do wish that you could post from it, but I understand why. Well, I, yeah, possible. I think that's not in the API, which is, uh, right. I, I, you know, Instagram has a web uh, interface. You know, you can go to Instagram.com, and I think it's that's kind of maybe where they're getting uh, this from. Mm. Uh, which maybe means that Instagram won't kill it because they they want people to do this. The uh, creators, uh, Anch Nanda and Hardik Patil, uh, have some money. Uh, because they have had previous successes uh, in the App Store, so uh, they they their company Unifeed published the OG app. They um, they they met while working at Kirana Cart, a grocery delivery app. You may know it better as Zepto, which raised. <laughs> I swear, you're just speaking <laughs> just all of these names. Like, what are these? Uh, yeah, you know, exactly. I I know that he was only in the first two Marx Brothers movies, <laughs> but he is my actually favorite. he yeah. made a bigger contribution than most people say. Uh, they have raised two hundred million dollars in May, so uh, they're going to be around. It has a lot of features that are great. You can even, and this is something that uh, doesn't work very well on Instagram, follow subject matter. So uh, you can create alternative feeds and share them with your friends for food or whatever, you know, you're interested in uh, without following those accounts, kind of like Twitter lists. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Now, can, can, I, can I enter a practical question at this point? Yes. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 100, what are the chances that this is just a scam to get people's login credentials? It uses the API, so you use the OAuth um, you are okay. login Such a so, they don't, so they don't see it. <laughs> I hope yeah, not. I mean, I guess they could. We don't know. I, lo I, As, I, I, I love. I love humanity. I suspect people. It is. It does right. pull no, you I, to an Instagram, an Instagram page where you log in and then authorize it. But yeah. okay, so yeah. it doesn't. See I your checked page. this morning when I was using it to make sure it was truly the Instagram site and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but I was. I'm with you, uh, Andy. In terms of, I was. I was skeptical about that too, and a little worried at first. But once I saw that it was using that form of login as opposed to just type in your username and password here i would have said no i'm not doing that <laughs> yeah yeah so maybe just you know consider maybe wait a little bit see i mean apple approved it that's a good sign right uh, well, it, it has, you know, I'm, I'm here in the Google Play Store. It has over 100 downloads. So. <laughs> it's brand new, folks. I know uh, I know that that means that, that means there could be thousands. They just have enough. Okay, but yeah, still, it's yeah. like, okay. No, <laughs> that skepticism, I think, is important. It is um, a fair, and fair point. <laughs> yeah. Only reason I did is because once I saw they were making use of the official API and the yeah. only way to log in was through that easily revocable option where they don't ever get access to your actual credentials, right. I was fine. But it was annoying that then when I went to the Instagram, Instagram app after that, um, I got all these prompts about, uh, you've logged in from a different thing. We need to confirm that it's actually you. Can you tell us, uh, check if this is still your phone number. If it's still your phone number, we're going to send you a code. Oh, uh, is this still the email that you use? It made me do this whole security checkout uh, just to get good. back in. Just another now reason not to use the out. Instagram app. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have to if you want to post. Uh, Micah, thank you for filling in on short notice for Alex Lindsay. He had to uh, go and do some work. That, which does happen from time to time. Micah is the host of iOS Today with Rosemary Orchard, a must-see podcast if you use iPhones or iPads or, I guess, TV, I, Apple TV and uh, Apple, Apple TVs, Watches as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Everything but Mac OS, I guess, is what it yeah. is. We should call and it the Everything But Mac OS show. <laughs> everything But Mac. <laughs> How are you doing that weather display behind you? Is that a, what is that? Oh, Let's this do. is one of the most common questions I get. Yeah. Um, this is called the Tidbyte, T-I-D-B-Y-T-E. And it is a really cool programmable LED display. Oh, sorry, there's no E on the end. No e. My apologies. T-I-D-B-Y-T dot com. Um, and it is, yeah, a little LED display that you can add personal. Um, oh, nice. the, the, the coding, like you can, you can make your own little apps and applets. I did a little clock that was personal. Uh, at night, it shows the... Uh, uh, moon phases, the phases of the moon oh. over the next coming days. There's a chihuahua, so obviously I had to buy it. Um, <laughs> but it does a lot of fun stuff. Uh, oh, I'm going to get this. That's yeah, cool. I, everybody who's asked me, then when I tell them where it is, they're like, oh, I got it, and I love it. It's so fun. I'm guilty that oh, I man. asked them a while back. 179 too. bucks. Okay. Yeah. I have the La Metric, which is very similar, but it's a smaller display. 
Uh, and it looks like not quite as programmable. So that's kind of, that's very cool. It uses Wi-Fi, this, the, I presume. Yeah. Yes. This, this looks like an Adafruit project that I keep telling myself, oh, I should buy that panel yeah. and I should buy yeah. a Teensy and I should totally. then realize that it would, I would probably, it would take me a year to finally get around to it and then it would be half butted. And maybe I should just give these people a very reasonable amount of money. That's not that much more than what it would cost for me to build it myself. It looks nice. Thank you. Yeah, Ryan. and it's so fun to to make little uh, projects with it. I, it. It was kind of my encouragement to do a little bit of coding as well. So oh. that's, that was kind of oh, wow. Op I see open e open ecosystem. Write your own apps. Flash your own firmware. Wow. Yep. And yeah. Even, yep. So it's, even it's actually free better. Display. Yeah. Even yeah. It's better than I, you know, would have thought. Uh, Andy and Akko, when are you going to be on GBH in Boston next? I'm on a day early uh, this week. I'm on uh, Thursday at uh, 1245. Go to WGBHnews.org to stream the audio live or later or go to WGBH's YouTube channel to watch me live or later. And this is... <laughs> I wish I wish they, I wish they hadn't switched to it, added a YouTube channel because now that's another thing I actually have to shave and dress for. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, they've seen you on this show and they say, "Well, we must have a video stream." For yeah, at, least, at least at least when I'm on on Fridays, I'm in the library studios. At least I get to be in the library, and that's oh, well. very nice. Uh, thank you uh, to again to Stephen Robles who uh, is sitting in the dark right now. We're thinking about him. <laughs> We're yeah, thinking sure. about you. Survive uh, if as best you oh, can God. through the hurricane uh, Ian, which is hitting Tampa. The first serious hurricane to hit Tampa in a hundred yeah. years. Yeah. Um, uh, Stephen, everybody run down there. Stephen's always uh, a great uh, contributor. Beard.fm is his uh, website. Um, and we'll just have to have him uh, back. I hope Jason That's Snell right. uh, was he. We knew he was going to be out, didn't he? Say he He's was going visiting uh, his his mom. He's visiting his mom. Yeah. So that was very oh. important. Well, then I can't complain. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad because <laughs> I'm glad because th this was sounding like an Agatha Christie novel at that point. Okay, we are, we lost two before <laughs> the show. Yeah. There were we lost none one during the show. <laughs> <laughs> so the murderer is either Micah, <laughs> Leo, or me. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> Thanks to everybody who joined us. We do Mac Break Weekly, Tuesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 1800 UTC. You can watch live at live.twit.tv. If you're watching live, chat with us live at irc.twit.tv. Or if you're a Club Twit member, you get that Discord chat as well. After the fact, on-demand versions of the show available at twit.tv slash mbw. You can also get it on uh, YouTube. Every show has its own dedicated YouTube channel. So that's an easy way to, if you want to share clips or whatever via the YouTube channel. And uh, probably the easiest thing to do is subscribe in your favorite podcast player. And you'll get it automatically the minute it's done. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Now get back to work because break time is over. Bye-bye. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.